Uh, go back and look at that, that Texas A&M game. Todd Grantham had to dial up a ton of pressure. They had to use a bunch of different uh, twists and, and, and games to try to, to create pressure, all of which Ole Miss, or excuse me, A&M's old offensive line was able to pick up. Uh, Kellen Mond got the ball out of his hands well, and it just looks like the, the secondary's not doing their job. But in actuality, it comes down to the defensive line play. I thought they were a lot better last week against Missouri, particularly in early down sequences, getting some stops in the run game on first and second down, and forcing third and long, which uh, Missouri had a much more difficult time overcoming than had the rest yeah. of the opponents on Florida's schedule in the first three weeks. Chris, it sounds to me, just in the way you laid it out there, that you know, even though college football has obviously evolved and there's so many big passing numbers, it sounds to me like you think that um, Grantham will pretty much sell out to stop Georgia's run and, and make those Georgia wide receivers beat them today, right? Yeah, man, that, that should be the game plan. Now, with that being said, if you go back and look last year, Florida was pretty good on, on first and second down against Georgia. They did a good job of, of forcing uh, that offense last year, Jake Fromm, into third and long situations. I think there were 18 third down tries last year, and I think the average yards to gain on those third downs was 6.9. Okay. And Georgia was able to convert on 12 of them. Wow. Uh, as I watched the tape, the majority of the issues came into not, not Georgia necessarily beating them, but Florida misaligning, not playing their assignments missing tackles, so I think even though you got to win on first and second down, which I think is a, a premium, especially against this, this Georgia offense, uh, you've got to be able to, to play your assignment well on third down, and I think that's something they did not do in the first three games of the season. I think combined third and fourth down, they were giving up 66% of those uh, opportunities to their opponents, and again, last week, I think they improved much better on third down. The Pony Express, CBS Sports Radio. I'm Andrew Filipponi. In just a few minutes on CBS TV, we'll have number 8 Florida versus number 5 Georgia. Ten of the last 14 years, the winner has gone to the SEC title game in Atlanta. We're joined by Chris Doring, CBS, uh, uh, excuse me, SEC Network Analyst and former, and former uh, Florida Gator here with us. Um, Kyle Trask, at least four touchdown passes in, in each of the first four games. He's put up incredible numbers do the numbers do them justice? Are they inflated numbers because of the opponent? Or is this guy, in your opinion, Chris, the absolute real deal? I think he's the real deal. And I think it's the first time that Florida's had a quarterback that's the real deal since Tim Tebow left after the 2009 season. I think that's why you're, you're watching Florida you know, be a, a team that's ascending to that, that next level, uh, trying to put themselves in the mix in the college football playoffs. It's all about quarterback play. I mean, I think if you, you go back and look at all of the teams over the last uh, couple years that have made it to the college football playoff, you, you don't do it without an elite quarterback. I mean, maybe maybe Clemson making it a few years ago with Kelly Bryant, and Kelly Bryant created his own issues for, for defenses. But uh, I do think that, that uh, he's le- the legit real deal. I do think you look at the, the, the touchdown passes. I mean, 18 touchdown passes in four games, it's an SEC record through four games. But at the same time, it also speaks to – Florida's deficiency being able to run the ball. I mean, it's yeah. great to be able to throw the football as well as you can, uh, as, as well as you have, but if you can't run the football, it makes you one-dimensional. So that's my fear. Uh, this, this, this offensive line has not been great in the run game. They've had moments where they've looked good, but they're going to be challenged today. Even with, with Jordan Davis banged up, uh, even with Julian Rochester out, uh, Georgia's got some studs up front. So Florida's offensive line is going to have to play well and give them an opportunity to run so they don't become one-dimensional. Yeah, this is the heavyweight part of the matchup. It's the Georgia defense against the Florida offense is absolutely the main attraction of this game, Chris. Um, so you think their running woes for Florida, you know, it's not it's not about the, the talent at running back. It's more about what the guys have done. The following is an exclusive presentation of Pirate Radio, the voice of the Pirate Nation. Pirate fans, welcome to the U.S. Cellular 5th Quarter Postgame Call-In Show. Brought to you by U.S. Cellular. Be sure to visit one of ECU graduate Brandon Tate's Platinum Certified U.S. Cellular stores and experience the highest standard of customer service. Call in on the live line at 317-1250. Now, with a complete recap of the game and your phone calls, live from the Pirate Radio Studios, here's your host of the U.S. Cellular 5th Quarter, Clip Brock. A disappointing outcome at Dowdy Ficklin Stadium this afternoon. Tulane runs all over the Pirates today, 38-21, as they are counting down the final seconds at Dowdy Ficklin Stadium. And Tulane comes in to town. They uh, dominate the first half, up 14 at halftime. Really dominated the third quarter. And the team's trade blows there in the second half. But Tulane too much today. 
and a disappointing loss after things seemed to be going in the right direction for ECU. They uh, may have taken a couple of steps back today in this defeat. All right, we will take your calls, 317-1250. We're with you on the U.S. Sailor fifth quarter call-in show. Open lines at 317-1250. We're back with your calls and thoughts on this one after this. Hidden phone trade-ins, hidden plan requirements, hidden catches. You won't find them at U.S. Cellular because we speak FAIR. Plus, when you switch right now, you can get the latest phones free. Upgrade to FAIR. Upgrade to U.S. Cellular. Requires new postpaid service plan, new line port, and credit approval. Qualified smartphone purchase and comes via monthly bill credit on a 30-month RIC. Taxes, fees, and additional terms apply. This is Brandon Tate, owner and operator of Atlantic Wireless, an authorized agent for U.S. Cellular since 1997. Visit AtlanticWireless.com to find the store near you. We go beyond the call. Chico's Mexican Restaurant is the home of the best margaritas. Grab your amigos and head to Chico's every Tuesday for the Gulp of Mexico, a huge 46-ounce lime margarita for only $6.99. On Thursdays, relax and enjoy half-priced pitchers of Chico's house margaritas. Choose from lime, strawberry, blood orange, raspberry, or peach. For Mexican food and fun, it's got to be Chico's Mexican Restaurant in downtown Greenville and online at chicosrestaurant.com. Chico's, where the fiesta never ends. Temperatures are in the low 30s at 10 a.m., increasing sharply to 75 degrees by 1 p.m., and then dropping into the teens by 10 p.m. So before you go to work, put on some gloves, pack some shorts, and a parka that should cover you for the day. Your heating and cooling is taking a beating. Guarantee your family's comfort all fall and winter with a new train system. It's hard to stop a train. For a limited time, get a new train system with 0% financing for 60 months. Go to DelcorInc.com for more information. Delcor, the service professionals. See your independent train dealer for details. Call one 888 for details. Wouldn't it be great if you could get auto, home, life, and business insurance all from one agency? Well, that's where the Gavigan Agency comes in. They can help protect what is important to you. So why not simplify your life? See the Gavigan Agency in Greenville or give them a call today at 252-756-1400. Nationwide is on your side. Nationwide Mutual Insurance Company and Affiliates, Columbus, Ohio. Subject to underwriting guidelines, review, and approval. If you thought you saw the last of Double Cheeseburger Pizza, think again. Because it's back at Papa John's again with a large double cheeseburger pizza for just 12 bucks. Better ingredients, better pizza, Papa John's. Hey, Pirate fans, order the new Double Cheeseburger Pizza for only $12. The new Cheeseburger Pizza is an MVP move for game day or any day. Place your order online at PapaJohns.com and sign up for Papa Rewards. Papa John's, the official pizza of the ECU Pirates. Get your ice cold Bud Light, Bud Light Seltzer here. Even though you can't go to the game, doesn't mean the game can't be brought to you now, hip. Just go to BudLight.com slash delivery. That's BudLight.com slash delivery. Give me two bagels. Coming at you. It's a little short. Ow. Sorry. You know what? I'm just going to walk them over to you. Whenever there's a game to watch, there's a Bud Light there. Enjoy responsibly. Anheuser Busch Bud Light Beer and Bud Light Seltzer, IRC Beer, Beer in Texas, St. Louis, Missouri. Pirate Radio. And you write that down because when you're at East Carolina, you go for it every time. Or you don't coach at East Carolina, you don't come to East Carolina, you don't play at East Carolina with a weak heart. Write it! The voice of the Pirate Nation. You're listening to the U.S. Cellular fifth quarter post game call in show. Here's Clip Brock. All right, a dud by the Pirates today. 38-21, the final. Tulane uh, running all over East Carolina and throwing all over Pratt. The uh, freshman looked pretty impressive today for Tulane. East U's offense, the run game, the O-line took a major step back today. Uh, you could say the same about the defense. We will talk about it for uh, however long you want to. We're here till the last caller is served on the U.S. Sailor fifth quarter call-in show. We have a couple lines open, 317-1250. Kenny, hang on. We'll get to Cameron and Greenville first. Hey, Cameron. Man, embarrassing, pathetic. But, hey, it, it, we diverted back to the old ECU the past few years today. Um, I'm very disappointed. Um, I believe we've turned a lot of corners this season so far, even though we're now 1-5. But today we just absolutely laid an egg, and we reverted back to our old ways of the, the offensive line getting absolutely dominated in the trenches and the defensive line getting run over. 
And it doesn't matter how much talent we got at wide receiver. It doesn't matter who we have at quarterback. It doesn't matter who we have at the safeties or quarterback. As, as long as an, an opposing team can just have their way with us in the trenches, it doesn't matter if we're playing a freaking J, J.X. Road high school team. Uh, they're going to run right through us. Um, that's all I have to say. I'm uh, disappointed. Um, didn't get much of a run game going on with Rajay, but hey, Tulane just ran right over off the lineman. When you got Bailey Malice out there, who looks like a, uh, a skinny point guard out there off the line, I don't, I don't understand what he wanted to do. He shouldn't even be an offensive line. He should be a tight end or something. He's so skinny out there. I don't understand. Uh, but yeah, it's just, it's brutal, brutal to watch. We're one and five. It's, it's hard. I believe we have turned a lot of corners, but just a horrible egg delay. It reminded me of the USF game last year, but it's not going to get any easier for us. We have to get some adjustments going on for next week in Cincinnati. And I just want to end with this. I want to call out Ronnie Woodward, uh, for the pregame t- tailgate show. Listening to him say that Tulane is not talented, I almost wanted to like scream and call you guys this place. What a horrible, horrible thing to say. Tulane is, is talented. They're fast. As soon as Ronnie Woodward said that, I was like, oh, we're East Carolina's going to get blown out today because Ronnie Woodward just dinks it. Uh, but anyways, that's blasphemy to say that Tulane's not talented. That's all I have to say. Go Pirates. All right, the Ronnie Woodward kiss of death during the pregame show. Tulane looked uh, a lot more talented than we did today. Uh, that is for sure. All right, 317-1250. Kenny is up next in Blunt's Creek. Hey, Kenny. Hey, Cliff. Uh, you know, after the last three weeks, you know, I promise, man. You know, we, we, we go down to South Florida and we look great. You know, pretty good game. We, we play Navy, and if, you know, if we got a quarterback, we win that game. We get robbed last week, and, you know, like, man, God, we're, we're, we're right on the cup of being a decent and a pretty good football team. We're turning the page. I really thought that. And I told my daughter on the way over today for the game, I said, you know, I would not be shocked if we lay an egg. And then after, same thing the guy just said. Ronnie Woodward gave us a kiss, a kiss of death. Was, I told her, I said, oh, my God, he shouldn't say that. You know, but it comes down to play calling, uh, defense and offense. Some of the play calling in the first half. I look, I like Donnie Capatcher, man. He's he's a nice guy. He, he does great sometimes. But some of them calls, man, were terrible, terrible. We didn't execute. We, we went away from the run game at the beginning of the game. We didn't we didn't run outside. We ran right up the middle. And guess what, guys? We don't run up the middle. Hello. Uh, Defense, we were not attacking. We didn't get pressure on the quarterback. This guy's a freshman. He pulled the ball down and run 16 yards at a time. It, it, it's, it was uh, very disappointing. I don't know what else to say, man. Very disappointing. Halfway home before the game's over, and I, I do not like that. So, uh, you know, regroup, go to Cincinnati. Maybe we'll put a better effort up. 2020 uh, sucks. <laughs> All right, there's Kenny. Uh, from Blunt's Creek calling in today. 317-1250. Yeah. um, I actually think they'll play good next week against Cincinnati. It's like the opposite of what you think is going to happen happens with this football team. We were expecting a a solid performance today. Uh, We just did not get that. And, uh, yeah, it was a dud. It was tough to watch. We'll get the comments and uh, thoughts of Rick Smith, who joins us here on the fifth quarter. That coming up in just a moment. But right now, we will go out to the Fixed NC live line. We have open lines, 317-1250. 317-1250. Bryce is talking to Shirley rather than talking to me on the air. Bryce, will you please shut your mouth talking to Shirley and you are on. Hello, Bryce. Hello, Clip. Hello, uh, am, am I on? You are hey, on. Hey, guys. Call from, God bless it. I'm calling from Charleston, South Carolina. How y'all doing? All right. All right. Okay, I'm, I, okay, I've got Clip on the line. They're, they're honking for you, man. Sorry, man. Uh, well, uh, I can't say I'm happy about what happened today. Uh, and uh, as our friend um, Denny O'Brien would say, we were very ECUing today. Uh, we show up for the big games, and then we don't for, for the ones that we don't think matter. And um, it was a little disappointing. And I hate to say that. Uh, I... Um, I, I, I'm not sure what else to say uh, other than, um, I mean, I know this is this season is kind of a go fish sort of situation, and at least everybody gets to learn from these things, but um, 
I, I just don't know if the aggressiveness, I mean, we usually, we either, we play big for the big games and we're not on this one. Heck, Clip, I don't know what to say, brother. Yeah, uh, I'm uh, at a loss on this one, too. I uh, expected a much better performance today. Everything we had talked about leading up to this game uh, kind of regressed, uh, especially the offensive line. Aylers was harassed all day, could not run the ball. Uh, Todd just pointed out a, a stat on the UB stat sheet during, in the uh, Facebook live chat. said we had more penalties than third down conversions today. There's a stat for you. So it, it was well, it was ugly. Coach, just do us a favor and just don't wear that stupid tie again. Yeah, we're zero and one with you wearing a tie during during games. Yeah, <laughs> no more ties for me. I'm uh, I'm retiring the tie, Bryce. So don't worry I, about I, that. I, I love you guys, and I pray for you and Captain Bill's call. Go back. <laughs> All right, there's uh, Bryce calling from South Carolina today. Three one seven twelve fifty. Jimbo is in Washington. Hello. Go Liberty Flames. That's what you get, ho, because you take the Pirates off the schedule. You deserve it. Woo! All right. The Flames just beat Virginia Tech 38-35. to And uh, that was Jimbo in Washington. All right. Let's reset. Uh, take a timeout. Shirley's uh, answering some calls. We got lines locked and loaded. Uh, 317-1250. Call in with your thoughts. We'll take a timeout and uh, come back and get the thoughts of Rick Smith, who joins us here inside the Pirate Radio Studios. A lot to go and a lot of calls to get to on the U.S. Sailor Fifth Quarter College Show. We're back with you after this. Great food, great atmosphere, and great service is Atavola Market Cafe. Atavola is simply a restaurant that focuses on that, being a great restaurant. There's something for everyone at Atavola. The menu offers a variety of great choices like pastas, pizzas, sandwiches, soups, salads, and seasonal rotating selections. Lunch or dinner, Atavola is always the right call. Call ahead and get Atavola to go. Or stop by the bar for a drink with friends. It's simple. Come and eat at Atavola Market Cafe, Red Banks Road next to Food Lion, and AtavolaMarket.com. Atavola, pirates supporting pirates. Your CBD store in Greenville has the highest quality CBD products in the country. Your CBD store is the first and only brand that carries USDA certified organic products such as gummies, honey sticks, and high absorption water soluble liquids which are all made in the United States. They even offer products for your pet. The educated staff will help you answer any questions and you can stop in anytime to get a free sample. Your CBD store locally owned and operated open Monday through Saturday 10 to 6 right beside Duck Donuts in Greenville. Hey, Pirate Nation, this is former ECU tight end Bryce Williams from my friends at the Auto Store Group. If you're in the market for a quality used vehicle, then the Auto Store Group is for you. The Auto Store Group has three locations and over 150 quality used vehicles to choose from for all budgets. Shop their entire inventory today at theautostoregroup.com. The Auto Store Group, your hometown store and pirate owned and operated for over 38 years. Go Pirates! Here with Mike Mullis from Fixed NC. And Mike, you were telling me the other day, people ask you all the time, I didn't know you did that. What does that mean? You know, anything that involves property damage repair, call us first. If it's your crawl space, you've got interior humidity issues, a water loss, your ice maker line breaks, obviously fire and smoke, everybody knows we do those. But anything that involves interior or exterior property damage, we're your repair experts. Mike, how can everybody get in touch with you? 252-999-0001 or FixedNC.com. What's the big deal? Where can you get pizza, bread twists, specialty chicken, and more for just five ninety nine each? Is it at Domino's? He hands off hand tossed pizza and a marble cookie brownie. He's going, going, going! There's a lot of variety on the radio and at Domino's too, where you can mix and match two or more. Five ninety nine each at Domino's. Two item minimum: pan pizza, bone and wings, and bread bowls will be extra. Ask for this limited time offer. Prices, participation, delivery area, and charges may vary. Hi, I'm Annalie Newhoff. And I'm Rob Campbell. And, and we, we are, are with, with Copy, Copy Pro. Pro. We have been locally owned and operated here in eastern North Carolina for almost 50 years. Copy Pro is the leader in office technology. Does your business struggle with keeping printing costs low or producing professional documents? Here at Copy Pro, total customer satisfaction is our number one priority. We have a variety of solutions to help reduce your printing expenses and make your business more productive. Call us today at 1-800-682-6558 or online at copypro.net. Copy Pro. We are the professional office systems people. Pirate Radio. This mother is still rocking. We're just glad to be here alive and kicking butt on Pirate Radio. Let's go. The voice of the Pirate Nation. 
You're listening to the U.S. Cellular Fifth Quarter Post Game Call-In Show. Here's Clip Brock. All righty, 317-1250, the number on the Fixed NC Live line. Got uh, Shirley Rhodes, Chandler Honeycutt, Coach Rick Smith here. Joining me inside the Pirate Radio Studios. Also, some leftover Parkers in the back, Coach, if you want to drown your sorrows with some good food. Amen. Uh, we could, <laughs> could do that, too. Got some great uh, shrimp burgers, barbecue sandwiches, Parker's barbecue, some good comfort food. You need a little comfort at home right now, so go to parkersbbq.com to uh, ask about their delivery options as well. All right, Coach, uh, before we get to Donna and A.T., Alan Thomas, we'll uh, get your quick thoughts on this one. You summed it up in two words during the break. You might want to say it different on the air, but uh, what did you think of today's game, Coach? I don't think our players, our kids were ready to play today. Uh, two lanes, not that good. Uh, I, you know. Not 38-21 to 21 no, good. I and, felt like Not it, dominate the game good. Yeah. Uh, we, didn't, we didn't move the ball enough on offense. And too many big plays on defense to keep their drives alive. I, I bet they had uh, probably seven or eight passes over 20 yards, and they had at least, I don't know, maybe six or seven runs over 15 yards. You just can't give up those big plays. They had like 16 or 17 drives. A normal game is about 12 drives. Now, when, a, when your opposing offense has 16 or 17 possessions that means your offense is either scoring a lot fast or they're punting on third down a lot <laughs> yeah three and out <laughs> oh, quick three, three and out yeah you know, uh you know the defense gave up too many big plays in the passing game and the running game and our offense didn't keep the defense off the field so i mean it was it was it was just not good by the offense or the defense you got a question for Coach Smith, you can give him a call, 317-1250. He's here to answer those. Uh, let's go to Alan Thomas on the Fixed NC Live line. What's up, AT? Hey, gentlemen. How are you, Clip? Great. How are you? Good to hear your voice. Miss you guys this year. It's been a weird year, <laughs> to say the least. All around, it has, yeah. It has. Hey, uh, on the positive side, beautiful, beautiful day to watch football in Dowdy Ficklin. Was was blessed to get a chance to go today. And um, good to see those that were there. I mean, the real pirate spirit was there. It's good to see a lot of students and band and all those folks there. But at the end of the day, we're, we're, we're there to support East Carolina, but also to, to win football games and show improvement. And I'll tell you, Coach, I was really hoping I was going to see the fifth quarter. And um, I know all copyrights for Pirate Radio, but the fifth quarter for East Carolina football was what I was expecting to see in the first quarter today. A three and four Tulane team, you know, a uh, pretty young quarterback, um, some, some vulnerabilities that I thought we could probably exploit. But what I saw early in this game and, and did not see change is they dominated between the tackles on both sides of the ball. And they dictated the flow. We only run for, ran for 34 yards. Um, we tried a number of different approaches. I mean, at some point they were only rushing four guys and we were struggling with blocking. After last week, we really protected Holton. I really thought maybe that was a step forward, you know, in having some linemen back and, and being able to, to – and as you said, Coach, we didn't do our defense any favors. I mean, we did a lot of three and outs. I think we were three for 15 on third downs, and you just can't do that. And we didn't have a ton of penalties, but we had a couple that really hurt us. But, guys, at the end of the day, I look at scheme, and um, I look at on their side, uh, they knew they were playing East Carolina. We played a couple of teams just tried to come out and just do their thing. But today, Tulane game plan for us and, and took care of our vulnerabilities. You had a – you had a quarterback on their end that forced East Carolina's defense to play 11 on 11. He pulled the ball out of the running back's belly a number of times at the right time, make some plays. And then on our end, we seem very hesitant. I'm not sure if it's by design, <coughs> what we think we're seeing, uh, to, to let our quarterback, you know, go and pick up first downs. And you all know we had a couple of second and threes in the middle of the game that we ultimately ended up not getting converting first downs, and it cost us, you know, and – well, anyway, we'll, we'll go with that. Um, I appreciate you guys being on here and always walking us through. And uh, we just got to show improvement week to week. I mean, I've always said that this is a tough year with all the circumstances we're dealing with, but with no eligibility being lost, we need to treat this year, you know, for, in my opinion, like we're preparing for next year. You know, this would be our preseason to find out who can play for next year when it's going to matter. But doggone it, we need to win games like this. Now, hang up and listen, but, but thank you guys so much for all you do. All right, Al. Thank you, Thanks, Al. man. 
Now I'm not. I, I could be wrong on this because you know I'm, my stats come off of what I see during the game. But mm-hmm. I believe they had. I know they had at least 16 possessions. Or our offense had 16 uh, P and tens. That's first down of a new series. Mm-hmm. 16 or 17. We scored. Was it three touchdowns? Yes. That means we we're scoring touchdowns 17 percent of the time. That's, that's not good enough. Uh, Two of those kind of when it was out of reach. Yeah, yeah. yeah just, uh, you know, we just didn't, didn't play well. Pirates scored on the, uh, their first possession to match Tulane 7-7 seven to seven, and then did not score until pretty much this one was all said and done. All right, 317-1250. Donna is up in Virginia Beach. Hey, Donna. Hey, how are y'all doing? All right. Good. Um, you know, I kind of I agree with Coach, and I agree with the previous caller, um, you know, the prediction said we were only, what, a four-point uh, or a, a, a very low underdog compared to Tulane this week, and we've been showing improvement the last few games. You know, uh, Tulsa was taken from us last week. I'll argue that. But this, we, we shouldn't have uh, had as many mistakes and as many, um, you know, exploiting, or we should have been able to exploit the weaknesses found in, Tul- uh, in Tulane this week. Um you know, I'm still proud of the Pirates. I'm still going to support the Pirates. I'm just, I'm kind of, you know, this week was just an off week for them. But I really want to see some improvement. Yeah, Donna, thank you for the call in Virginia Beach today. And uh, 317-1250, the number. Coach Smith, uh, once again, it, it, it hurts more. We were talking to, to Chandler before the show. When you expect to win, at the very least, you expect a close game, right? And, and instead, you get blown out. Well, you know, yesterday, you and I were talking. I mean, I researched them. I've watched them on film. And I honestly thought that we were going to win it by seven or lose it by seven. I thought it was going to be that type of game, you know, two guys slugging it out. And, you know, but uh, they kicked our butt. They did. They did the entire time. All right, we have open lines, 317-1250. Terry's up in Wilmington. Hey, Terry. Hey, uh, how y'all? Hey, how y'all doing? Uh, right. I know, uh, I know it's you know tough, tough, uh, tough day today and all. But uh, you know, I've uh, I've had a move, you know, from Georgia to Wilmington, and uh, I'm glad to be back in uh, up here in Pirate Country again. But uh, I, I'm looking at this whole season like a like it's an extended spring training. Except you get to play games, and uh, yeah, I know the record's important and all that type of stuff. But uh, sometimes you just got to look at the, the improvement and how we're doing and, and all that. But uh, how much, Coach? Uh, you know, love hearing you talk. Uh, how much you think? Uh, you know, this was uh, Tulsa beat us twice type game. I I, uh, I believe that. I've been there. I've done that. <laughs> you can talk to those kids. You can talk to those kids all week, and I can honestly say that that none of our players planned on losing today, and I promise you those kids tried to get ready to play mentally, but sometimes it happens, and they they fool themselves. They think they're ready to play, but they're still living in the past. I mean, I've, I've had... I've had secondaries when I was secondary coach that did that. Uh, you know, teams. Uh, it's just something. And I can remember going in sometimes and, and telling them, I can't remember if it was Ruff, Coach Ruff, or Coach um, uh, Montgomery. Montgomery. You know, Coach honestly thought they were ready to play. I don't know what happened, you know. And I would talk to my kids on Monday or Sunday, you know, watching the tape, and they would just look at me like, Coach, I thought I was ready to play. And sometimes when you go through something like you did at Tulsa, and, and you know, I think you said it pretty well, you know, Tulsa probably beat us twice today. Uh, I don't know. I just didn't think they were – they weren't real aggressive today. No. Well, because it, it's even tough on the coaches. They're at a certain point, you even look – you know, question you, yourself as far as uh, did I do enough. Did, and certainly the head coach. So – it's a tough time, and uh, and everybody's 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 working toward uh, uh, something positive. Though I feel like, okay, and I so, mean, uh, I'm just looking to the future. You know, I mentioned this on the show yesterday that that I was a little worried about Tulane coming in here, you know, all jacked up because they're still playing for a bowl game, and they've got their offense. They have two graduate students, 
two seniors and four juniors. So out of their starting 11 on offense, they got eight upperclassmen, and those kids are playing for a bowl game. And then on their defense, they've got one graduate student who's been in school six years, and they've got six seniors, and four of them have been there five years, and four juniors, and two of them have been there five years. So uh, those were older kids that we played today, an older team, offensively and defensively. Out of the starting 22, uh, you know, you're looking at uh, 18 upperclassmen out of 22. And they were playing for a bowl game today because they can win – they win today. They got three left. They can win those three. I, I'm sorry. They got four left after today. If they run the table, which I know who they play, and they can win four, so they'll have a winning season, and they they got a chance. They still have a chance to go to bowl game, and we didn't. And that that might have been the the reason they played so well today. Right. Well, I appreciate it, coach. Thanks uh, for what y'all doing. Uh, uh, appreciate everything. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you for the call. All right, there is uh, Terry calling in. 317-1250. We have open lines if you want to jump in now. 317-1250. We'll be back with more of your calls on the U.S. Sailor 5th Quarter Call-In Show. Back with you after this. At Tiebreakers, we pride ourselves on serving big, big and juicy wings. wings. I'm talking big and juicy. Our chickens are the same ones that kick sand in the other chickens' faces. If our chickens played football, they'd be linebackers. The competition's chickens, they'd be skinny little kickers. Trade those kickers in for linebackers. Tiebreakers is open every day at 11 a.m. Follow Tiebreakers on Facebook and Instagram for daily updates. Hey Pirate fans, this is head coach Mike Houston. The physicians at Orthopedics East and Sports Medicine Center have been taking care of our athletes here at East Carolina for more than 35 years. Whether it's treatment for your sports injury or if it's time for that joint replacement, Orthopedics East provides the latest in operative and non-operative orthopedic care, physical therapy, and diagnostic testing. For experienced and professional services, call the folks who have been taking care of me and many of our fans in Pirate Nation or visit them online at orthopedicseast.com. Go Pirates! Hey, Pirate Nation, this is Tom Brown from Brown & Wood Cadillac. We've been serving the Pirate Nation in eastern North Carolina for 83 years. We have four brands, three generations, two showrooms, and one goal to make sure you leave a happy customer. This month at Brown & Wood, get an all-new 2020 Cadillac Escalade and save over $18,000 off. As always, Brown & Wood is the home of the lifetime powertrain warranty. We're located on Greenville Boulevard next to the Convention Center or shop us online at brownandwoodauto.com. With rates being historically low, now is the best time to buy or refinance your home. This is Talbot Green with Angel Oak Home Loans. Now is the time to take advantage of the opportunity to buy more home or refinance your current mortgage. The combination of our local team's experience and Angel Oak's wide offerings of products from standard conventional, government, and portfolio loans has something for most financial situations. For more information, call Talbot Green, Joanne Weir, or Wanda Hager at 751-2060. In MLS, 1719250 and 6858. For two. Equal housing lender. Ahoy, mateys! To keep those cars clean, you need the Pirates Cove Fast Pass. The new Pirates Cove Car Wash and Haviland Express Lube on Glen Burnie Road in New Bern is now open. Pirates Cove in New Bern is offering Fast Passes for $9.99 for new Fast Pass customers. You can visit us in Greenville on Fire Tower Road, Memorial Drive, and on East 10th Street. And have you heard? Pirates Cove on Fire Tower Road is now offering interior cleaning. So we have you surrounded. Pirates Cove, the official car wash partner of ECU Athletics. Hi, this is Scott Muller with Clean Eats. Carol and I would like to personally thank all of you for supporting Clean Eats so well through these tough times. We are blessed to have such a great community helping us weather the storm. If you're having trouble consistently eating healthy, go to cleaneats.com and click on meal plans and give our tasty and affordable meals a try. Or stop by the cafe for lunch and let us show you just how simple and easy it is to get started and stay on track. Clean Eats, it's a lifestyle. 805 Red Banks Road, Arlington Village. 
I'm Michael Vaughn with East Coast Grading and Utilities. Many of you know my dad, David Vaughn, and his work in putting in subdivisions all over Pirate Nation. But East Coast Grading and Utilities is not just for those type of big jobs. We're here for the homeowners. Whether it's concrete, driveways, hauling rock or sand, whatever you need, East Coast Grading and Utilities can get the job done. Call us at 252-531-7494 or check us out on Facebook at East Coast Grading and Utilities. Hey everybody, this is David Glenn, and you're listening to my favorite station in Eastern North Carolina, Pirate Radio, the voice of the Pirate Nation. You're listening to the U.S. Cellular 5th Quarter Postgame Call-In Show. Here's Clip Brock. Now, with the Pirate Radio scoreboard, here's Shirley Rhodes. All right, let's take a look at some of the finals from earlier today. North Carolina beat up on Duke, 56-24. to Number 25, Liberty, survives Virginia Tech in a wild finish. 38-35 was that final. Number 18, SMU, beat Temple, 47-23. to Memphis survives South Florida, 34-33. Iowa drubbed Michigan State 47 or excuse me 49 to 7. It was Northwestern over Nebraska 21-13. Number 22 Texas survives West Virginia 17 to 13. This one is a close one. Arizona State trailing number 20 USC 27-28 with less than a minute to go. And for the first time since 1987, number 13 Indiana beat number 23 Michigan 38-21. And games going on right now. Boston College has a 10-3 lead over Syracuse at the half. Marshall leads UMass 21-7 in the second quarter. It's App State 14, Texas State in the uh, 7 in the second quarter. Vanderbilt and Mississippi State have kicked off no score yet. Texas Tech and TCU are underway. Oklahoma has a 7-0 lead over Kansas in the first quarter. Georgia has an early 7-0 lead over Florida in the first. And Houston and Cincinnati are underway no score as of yet that is a look at your scoreboard now let's head back in to the u.s cellular fifth quarter post game call-in show here's your host clip rock all right uh rick smith shared some old stor- stories during the break and if you want to hear more rick smith stories you can check out the pirate radio podcast as ellerby and uh, coach smith talked about recruiting and some other uh topics on the pirate radio podcast so Make sure you check that out. If you have a question or comment for Coach Smith, you can dial us up, 317-1250. Uh, we have some open lines right now, and we have is that Tammy up in Goldsboro. Hello, Tammy. Hey, how are you? All right. I'm not going to ask. Well, I shouldn't have asked you how you are. Too late. you're not any better than I am. Yep, you're right. But uh, pretty disappointed today all around. You know, where was the offensive line, which we haven't had much of Holton was getting killed the entire time. Uh, you know, the defense, where, where we must have left them back in wherever we played the last game. Um, just curious if you guys saw anything differently than what we did, but, uh, you know, Blake Prohl, he showed up and showed proud. Um, we're going to keep coming to the game in our purple and gold, and we're going to be bold uh, fans, but really disappointed in the product on the field today. Yeah, major step back at a lot of different spots. And uh, Coach Smith, we were talking about uh, looking at the UBE stat sheet, some really bad numbers up there. Uh, Tulane ran the ball 34 times, threw the ball 34 times. The rushing totals uh, are just incredible, Coach. 277 to 35. That's, I mean. Yeah, that's almost a first down every time you run the football. Eight uh, yards a pop. Eight yards a pop. And that was the difference in the ball game. Uh, them running the running the football at will anytime they wanted to and in the big plays uh, i don't uh what i call a big play is any run over 15 yards and any pass over 20 and they may have had what 15 or 16 of those big plays well all four of their rushers including the quarterback had at least a 15 yard run yeah and in their main back today well not well the the cameron carroll kid only had six carries but uh, averaged 21 yards a carry because he had a 48-yard run. He hit them with some big ones. Yeah. Just, you know, the big plays killed us. Uh, if they can take the football and, and, you know, get the ball on the 25-yard line, 
drive 75 yards in 13 or 14 plays and they three yards you here four yards you there maybe a pass for 10 or something you know you can live with that but when you're giving up 22 yard plays 20 yard play 30 yard play 47 yard play i mean that's just uh the morale on the sideline when those things happen it's just those kids run out there on defense and they they aren't ready to play uh chandler we were talking earlier and and ashley on facebook live uh kind of says a comment we were discussing every time pirate fans get excited this happens (laughs) still love my pirates but it's hard to keep being positive that according to ashley it does feel like that when when our expectations are low pirates come out and almost pull the upset when we expect to win the game we get blown out that's what happened today anyway yeah well you know we have the right to be excited about this football (laughs) program they've showed a lot of improvement over the past couple of games uh the improvements that we've seen have been on the in the trenches on the offense and defensive line and uh personally i think that that took a step back today because you know we've been so successful in the past couple of games with uh rushing the football and that's where it all starts you can rush the football and open up those lanes to run the football then you can open up the passing game and that just gives a lot of more options for your offense we didn't see that today and while I'm on the uh, subject, you know, we talked about how good the special teams is for Tulane. Yeah. And there is multiple times that the Pirates had to start their, their drive uh, within their own 10-yard line. Uh, and, and talked so, talk about that yesterday, Coach. Tulane special teams, they were able yeah. to get to the football inside the five twice and down it. And uh, made some, and that, that takes away a drive from you, pretty much. If you start inside, if you got 90 yards to go, you're going to probably score, if you're lucky, 5% of the time. I mean, there's just too – you have to snap the ball too many times, and you got 11 guys every snap's got to do something. There's going to be mistakes. You figure a 15-play a drive, 15 times 11, uh, that can be mistakes. It takes away a lot of your playbook too, right, when you're uh, up against yeah. the end zone like that? <laughs> there was multiple times today uh, where they had punted the ball, and the gunner for Tulane was down there and meeting the ball pretty much he, as it was landing. Uh, and he caught it one he, time, he didn't he? caught the punt. <laughs> it was feel, just amazing. Yeah. All right, uh, Jay has a couple questions for you, Coach, on uh, Facebook Live. He says, uh, would you evaluate our linebacker play? Uh, and, again, you don't have – the uh, the all twenty two film like you did when you were coaching. What did you see on TV today, though? Well, the reason they're called linebackers is when the ball carrier breaks the line of scrimmage, he's supposed to make the tackle. Uh, you know, and sometimes because of the way our kids lined up, you know, they didn't have a chance. You know, you you one time we had everybody on the line of scrimmage. That was that forty yard play they busted through C gap. Uh, but you've got nine guys on the line of scrimmage and your DBs were all over uh, the other side playing man-to-man on people when they showed it. So, you know, the offense knew we were in some type of blitz. You got eight people on the line of scrimmage, maybe nine, and all they did was come off the ball and there was just a little crease there and the kid hit it and there wasn't anybody in the secondary that could make the tackle because they were all over there playing man-to-man. Uh, and I never like to play man-to-man coverage with eight guys on the line of scrimmage because when they break the line of scrimmage, there's just nobody there. Uh, but, you know, what do I know? I'm retired. <laughs> what, was, what was your saying about the blitz, Coach? You live by it? You live by the blitz or you die by the blitz. He also said, why doesn't Holton keep the ball on the RPO and run it more? And he says, was the defense taking that away? I, I didn't notice that. Uh, how many of those did he have? I don't remember, but about three. And I know he kept a couple of them. Yeah. Uh, and I think they're afraid. Maybe that maybe we're just afraid to get him hurt. Uh, I don't see us running as many, you know, quarterback options as we did last year. Uh, you know, if you got Garcia that did a decent job, I would I would do whatever I needed to do to win with Holton. I mean, if he were to get hurt, then you go with Garcia. And, or something Florida State did 100 years ago with Bill when uh, when uh, Coach Bowden was there. He had two quarterbacks. And one was a strict quarterback, drop back, and sling it. And the other kid was a pretty good runner, and it was down-the-line option, quarterback draws. And, and the, the defense that you were playing, you had to get ready for two different quarterbacks. You had to get ready for a drop-back quarterback and an option quarterback. And 
He only won 10 games that year and went to a big bowl. <laughs> <laughs> he was all right, I guess, as a head coach. Uh, Rajay Harris bottled up today, 13 carries, 27 yards. Left the game, but he did return at the end of the game, so it was good to see him back in the lineup. Uh, he averaged 2.1 yards a carry. Keaton Mitchell, 7 for 17, 2.4 yards a carry today. Uh, struggling running the football for the Pirates. 317-1250, we have open lines if you want to jump in now. Talk to uh, former ECU defensive coordinator Rick Smith. We'll be back with more of your calls on the U.S. Sailor fifth quarter call-in show back after this. Hi, this is Billy Parker, and football is here. Tailgate at home with family and friends this season and let Parker's Barbecue do all the cooking. While tailgating at your house, let us provide all the food with our delicious chicken, barbecue, seafood, and sides. We can customize packages for any size group, big or small. Give us a call today and place your order. Parker's and football, a winning combination. Also, shipping nationwide at parkersbbq.com. Parker's Barbecue is how friends and family come together. BMS Builders is your premier custom builder in eastern North Carolina. With Blackwood and Mills Creek in Greenville, Dalton's Cove in Farmville, and Belmar in Aden, these are just a few of the developments featuring BMS Builders Homes. They can build the home of your dreams. Just ask Dr. Dennis Ross in Greenville or East Carolina football coach Mike Houston. They built their homes, and they can build yours as well. BMS Builders. Give them a call at 916-1578 for BMS Builders. This football season, prepare your taste buds for the most iconic sports watching drink of all time, Pepsi. Designed to power even the most passionate of armchair quarterbacks, Pepsi has everything you need to start strong, keep you in the zone, and recover from those triumphant wins. Before I was just your average football fan, but thanks to Pepsi, I'm a football watching MVP. Nothing can stop me from cheering my team on to victory or overreacting when the ref makes a bad call. What do you mean he wasn't in? That looks like two feet to me. With refreshing deliciousness, especially for formulated to keep your eye on the ball and mouth-watering fizziness to help you power through game day pepsi is the premier football watching beverage i used to care when mike chaired so hard he spilled nacho cheese on my carpet or wiped buffalo sauce on my new couch but thanks to pepsi i'm so in the zone even mike can't ruin my football party <sighs> see don't even care so this football season make pepsi your go-to game day drink because it's the only drink made for football watching pepsi that's what i like Medicare is not one size fits all, but which plan is right for you? Hi, I'm Denise Walker and I'm a licensed insurance agent here in North Carolina. Whether you are turning 65, new to Medicare, or already have a plan, I can help you compare your Medicare options. I can help you find a plan offering low to no monthly premiums, prescription drug coverage, and a wide range of additional benefits like dental, hearing, vision, and more. Call me today at 434-531-5674 to get a no-cost, no-obligation Medicare benefits review. Did you know your small change can make a difference? The next time you visit McDonald's, please consider rounding up for the Ronald McDonald House. Your change adds up and can help many folks in Eastern North Carolina. Just $10 can provide a free night stay for families with sick children here in Eastern North Carolina and across the state. Just ask your cashier at checkout or choose to round up for RMHC when ordering through the McDonald's app. Thank you for visiting your local McDonald's owned by Dixon Foods and for your support of the Ronald McDonald House of East Eastern North Carolina. Enjoy the warm air circulating moments after you turn up the heat. Precise control of cooking temperatures. Enough hot water on demand for everyone's shower. The instant glow of warmth when you turn on your fireplace or fire pit. Never having to change a gas tank on your outdoor grill. Experience the affordable luxury of natural gas. Find out more at GUC.com. This is assistant football coach Drew Dudzik, and you're listening to Pirate Radio, the voice of the Pirate Nation. You're listening to the U.S. Cellular fifth quarter postgame call-in show. Here's Clip Brock. All right, 317-1250, the number on the fixed NC live line. We're here on the U.S. Cellular fifth quarter call-in show. Drowning our sorrows in some Parker's Barbecue. Go to parkersbbq.com. If you're from Oregon, they can ship it nationwide right to you. 
like our next caller, Justin. And I know a Justin Jones from Oregon. I went to high school with him, and I'm assuming this is the guy. Hello, Justin. How's it going, Cliff? And you are correct. It is the guy. Hey, guy. How's, how's, how's it going? Do they, really, they really ship me some barbecue out here? I don't know if they'll. Yeah. You know. Go to parkersbbq.com. They'll do it. Yeah. Well, look, yeah. Uh, I would say how how are you and Coach Smith doing, but, you know, we're all a little bummed out. Um, still love my Pirates. Uh, there was something in the second half I saw I was really confused by, and if someone else brought this up early in the broadcast, I apologize. But I saw a, I swore I saw they called for a fair catch on a punt, and then the, the, the punt returner advanced the ball. And I was confused by that. Does anybody remember that in the game? I don't, dude, I don't remember that, but that is illegal if that was to occur, but I don't remember that play. Coach, do you remember I, that? I don't remember the play, but for him to make a fair catch, the arm has to be above the head, almost perpendicular, and he has to wave it back and forth. What he probably did, and he's probably been coached to do that, to raise it up about helmet high and wave it, which is, you know, sometimes they'll call that as a unsportsmanlike conduct. If you and take it, off and run, it's a yeah. 15 yards, right? Yeah. If you do, and evidently they missed that, but yeah. I guarantee you the kid didn't put his hand way up in the air. He just kind of had it helmet helmet high and waved it. Uh, but they should have blew the whistle, brought it back, and put the ball right there. Was that a two lane player? Yeah, the two lane. Well, their their punt returner is uh, was pretty gutsy today. He made some interesting choices to field the ball, so he he had a lot going on. Yeah, it just confused me for a bit, and then I saw somebody on Twitter bring it up, and they were like, "Well, did they tell him he was trying to block the sun or something?" <laughs> like, yeah, that's what I was trying to call it a catch. I don't know. It just looked real confusing to me. I didn't know if anybody else caught that or not. He probably got a warning from the officials. Uh, about that because that's that's considered deception you know you kind of it's kind of half and half you know well maybe and the kids coming down to tackle him they're thinking well was that a fair catch or was that not a fair catch signal so he should have been warned and and i've actually seen people get penalized for doing that I mean, for it for it to be a fair catch the arm has to be extended above the head it has to move from shoulder to shoulder Got it. Got it. All right. Yep. Well, uh, that's about all I had. Instead of saying the same stuff everybody else said, um, just felt like thought we were going to come out and punch him in the mouth today, and just didn't work out the way <laughs> everyone thought it would. But and still, still got some talented players on both ends of the ball, and I like what we're still doing on you know, defense. Run game didn't work as well today, but. It's it's getting there. All right, Justin, good to hear from you, man. Yeah, buddy. I still I got that I got that braze koozie coming to you. I'm gonna to you. <laughs> All right, thanks, man. <laughs> well, uh, we'll, All right, buddy. we'll be back in 2021. The Braves will. All right, three one seven twelve fifty. Bill is up next in Elizabeth City. Hey, Bill. Hey, fellas, how's it going? Thank you for taking my call. Um, yeah, definitely. Uh, uh, tell the two uh, cities or whatever they say. Um, I guess. My point about it is like, um, you know, we 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 prepared all summer apparently for for Navy, and we played very well against Navy, but lost the game. Um, had a bye week against Tulsa, played very well against Tulsa, but we every, we all we all know what happened there. But today, you know, when uh, <clears throat> we just looked a little obviously flat today on both sides of the ball and uh i don't know i'm not i'm not questioning coaching or anything like that but i don't know it's like um you know is Tulane uh that better than we are i I think they did definitely beat us on the line in a lot of ways but i don't know we just did not look prepared today especially defensively um we were like two or three steps behind (laughs) and as to where um we have looked better in previous games. And I, you know, on the websites and everything, like we are making the turn, we're making the turn for the, for the better. But then here we go on this today, we lay an egg. 
And uh, my, I don't know if I'm making a question or a comment, but it's like uh, I, don't, I just don't know. You know, I believe we're going in the right direction. Is it, it, my and my point is, is like, but I don't know where today comes from. <laughs> well, like a lot of people don't. Yeah, and uh, no, I'm I'm with you, Bill. I mean, major step back at a lot of areas. You mentioned the defense. I think the O line took four steps back today, and uh, and and Tulane dominated the line of scrimmage. Coach, where was the team from last week, uh, and then what happened between last week and this week, in your opinion? They're still trying to find their way back from uh, from Tulsa, Oklahoma. Yeah, they're halfway somewhere between it's, it's a, it's somewhere on the I'm interstate. Sorry, right. <laughs> yeah, is that a hangover? Coach? Yeah, is that uh, a hangover? You know, and I, I can't. I'd be lying if I said I hadn't been through the same thing that these kids and coaches are going through. I mean. Uh, I've been in a situation where, you know, I thought my kids were ready to play, and they weren't. And I'm sitting there thinking, well, did I do that poor of a job? Uh, and I honestly think that the kids thought they were ready to play, and they're probably just probably tired from the way they lost last week, and that loss took a lot out of them mentally. And, uh, you know, if, if you'd have asked me yesterday, if you'd have told me that we were going to give up 277 yeah. yards rushing on defense and we were only going to rush for 34 on offense, I'd have told you what you smoking. Uh, well, th- I, That's the difference exactly, in the ball game exactly. right there. If you can't run it and you can't stop the run, then you're going to get embarrassed. But I just don't understand where that came from. Uh, like It's like, you know, Jekyll and Hyde. Well, <laughs> that's yeah. the thing. We don't have that it's answer for you, Bill. If I had that answer, I wouldn't be doing the radio show. I'd be somewhere making big money talking to coaches. There you go. Yeah, yeah. No, well, yes, sir. Uh, and I, the thing about it is, it's like, you know, like everybody says, like we're getting ready to make that turn, but we're not consistent enough to to beat a you know a two lane team. <clears throat> and uh, you know, I love the Pirates. You know, I bleed purple and gold, but I don't. You know, I don't know where that comes from today. I just don't know where that comes from. I know that uh, that I'm going to sound like, you know, I've said this before, and and I'm going to tell a story. Winning is a habit. Unfortunately, so is losing. These kids have lost since they've been here. It's hard to win when you've been losing. I'm sitting in the locker room at the University of Alabama in 1987, I think, and I got my head down between my legs. It's about the third day of spring practice, and Mike DeBose, who was the D-line coach, he says, what's the matter with you today? I said, hell, we were better at Georgia Tech than we are here. And he said, yeah, but them boys at Georgia Tech ain't used to winning like we are. When these kids tee it up on Saturday, they win. Because winning is a habit at the University of Alabama. I've never forgot that. And our young men, what is it now, five losing seasons in a row? Yes, sir. We got the right coach. We got the right coaching staff. It's going to take time. And uh, I'm telling you, one day we're going to beg Coach Houston to stay here when he gets an offer to go somewhere else because he's turned this program around. Well, I hope so. I and, and and that's a great story, by the way. And and thanks for relating that. I just, uh, you know, I just a little, you know, one day it's like what we showed last weekend, and what we come here today at home is just two teams. So uh, I hope that uh, Houston is the guy. And thank you for taking my call. And uh, go Pirates! Uh, we will rebound and got Cincinnati. What a great time to uh, ne- next weekend on Friday, I believe. And, uh, hey, we almost beat them last year. So, uh, all right, go Pirates. Thank you. All right, Bill. Thank you for your call. And, and look, we were going over Tulane's wins this season yesterday, Coach, and it was like South Alabama, Southern Miss, Temple without their starter. And I, I remember us saying, you know, well, how good are are their wins? And we said, we don't know. But you said, but they've won. Yeah. They've they've won and their coach has won, and he's got those kids thinking that they can win ball games. and And Mike Houston has ECU thinking they can win. They just haven't won these games yet. Willie came up the hard way. Their head coach, Coach Fritz, and I didn't know him very well, but uh, T 
two years ago was the 20th year anniversary of the Tulane team going undefeated that, that I was the defense coordinator on down at Tulane. They had a 20-year reunion. And the only coaches that showed up were the def- the whole defensive staff showed up. My, I was the D coordinator, and then uh, my, my three coaches showed up. None of the offensive coaches showed up. But Willie, Coach Fritz, was just so nice uh, cordial to us. I mean, we were we were in the locker room at the halftime. Uh, and you said you didn't know him at all no, beforehand. Yeah. I knew his reputation. Yeah. And I walked in. My wife and I walked in for a reception uh, on Friday afternoon, and he walked right up to me and he said, "Coach Smith, it's so great to meet you. You know, y'all had a great run here at. You know, he knew. He must have looked at me in the press guide or something, but." Uh, he is a good football coach, and I'm happy for him, you know, that he's got that program, you know, kind of going. Recruiting at Tulane is a whole lot different than it is here. Uh, when you go into a high school to recruit a Tulane kid because it's an academic, I mean, it's a pretty tough academic school. Uh, the three maths weren't general math. It was algebra one, algebra two, geometry, trigonometry. I mean, I remember going into some schools, and I just turned around and walked out. <laughs> I'd go look at the transcripts, you know. And uh, but it was it's it's a it's an academic school. It's it's a little bit tougher, you know. And like like we we can get kids in here that have a 17 on the ACT. Well, there they got to have a 24. Now, when I was there, now it might have changed, but it's hard to find. A bunch of athletes that that have a three point GPA and are taking, you know, twenty uh, academic courses and have a have a fifteen hundred on the SAT and all that stuff. And they got to want to go to Tulane. Like yeah. nothing against Tulane, we have the same problems here, but a lot and, lot you know, going against you there. When we got there, there wasn't anybody, wasn't many players from the from the South. They had been going north. And Tommy Biden said, we're going to draw a circle around this place, and we're going to start recruiting local kids. And, and we did a nice job recruiting local kids. But, uh, again, they were ready to play today, and they're playing for a bowl game because now they're 4-4, four and four, I believe. Are they 4-4? Four and four? I believe you're right, yeah. They're 4-4 four and four with three left, and I looked at who they're playing. They can win two of those, so they could be 6-4, and four, and they'll get a bowl game. All right, 317-1250, one more, and we have uh, some open lines if you want to jump in. Jake is up in Greenville. Hello, Jake. Hey, I was watching the game today so remind me of last year against South Florida and the game against Tulsa where we did show, winnable games where we didn't show up. It's not that happens a lot, you know, under, under Houston. And also, I, I'm wondering why all I've heard for 20 years, if we had better facilities, if we had this, if we had that. Now, I don't compare our facilities to Alabama, but it's a lot better. There's a lot of teams that we're losing to. You know, the stadium that we have now, the practice facilities, is so much better than a Liberty or Coastal Carolina or Appalachian <laughs> State. Yeah. Uh, you need, I, hey, well, you need to go look at Happy State's facility. Well, and Liberty has more money than God. I, you know, Jake, you might be right about some of those, but I think the schools you mentioned uh, could be ahead of us uh, right now when it comes to facilities, actually. When I came here with Skip Holtz 15 years ago, I was shocked. I had better facilities at Walker High School. Yeah, so, I mean, that, you know, and Jake, I don't know if that's an excuse or what, but that well it's an excuse in recruiting yeah because you can't kids walk into north carolina or nc state or wake forest uh, florida state or florida you ain't getting those kids yeah so, excuse me i get upset about that recruiting because it, it's tough here you go look at what you say that are you saying that coastal carolina go go look at their facilities better facilities than we have yes They have better facilities than we have. Yes, they do. And our, they just our moved kid, up to our division. Our kids are in the same locker room, same locker room that uh, Ruffin McNeil dressed in. I mean, it's an arm race across college football, and uh, 
you know you lag behind and, and that's yeah. what happens i mean it, it yeah the facilities right now are better a thousand times better than they were 15 years ago when i came here but i'm telling you everybody else's is is right. better than they were 15 years ago yeah. uh you'd be shocked if you went and looked at the facilities of uh appy state I mean, I mean I'm they, just telling you, that's the, the truth. Money. What can they can do and we can't? That's a good question. I mean, yeah. we're not talking about, I mean, App State, you know, I mean, we're not talking about Carolina. And Coastal Carolina, we're not talking about Clemson. But if they can do it, why do, why, or we can't? I don't know, but I I said, I right now we're broke. Stuff. We need a... <laughs> well, if we could... if. Like at the University of Florida, for instance, I'm a Florida State graduate, and when I went to FSU, there wasn't no law school, there wasn't no med school. It was just physical education teachers and history teachers. It was it was people that went out and made a living and didn't have a lot of money to give away. And Florida State was way way behind in recruiting facilities compared to the University of Florida, who had a law school and a medical school. And doctors and lawyers can contribute a whole lot more than a PE teacher can to the program. Now, since, you know, I've been out of school 40 years. Since then, they have a law school at Florida State. They have a medical school at Florida State. And their program has went up because of the donations. And uh, I don't know what our donations here are, but, uh, you know, you got defensive coordinators making a million dollars a year at some school and our defensive coordinator is probably making 350 so i mean we just don't have the money that some schools have now i can't explain to you why appy state would have better facilities than us but they do all right jake anything else when we beat carolina and state they had a lot better facilities but we still were able to win the game yes they win a single game yeah yeah Well, and, and you were just saying we lose to teams that we have better facilities than. So, I mean, it, it happens both ways, I guess, right? Facilities has nothing to do with you playing on the weekends, playing on Saturdays. It's about bringing the... Facilities have to do with recruiting, right? bringing kids in. And some kids are going to come to East Carolina no matter what facilities you got because that's where they want to go. Keith on Facebook Live says, uh, Coastal Carolina had a billionaire coach before he retired that helped him make the transition. Jeff Charles had that guy on a few times on his show. And and literally, a billionaire football coach. And uh, I'm sure he pumped a lot of money and all kinds of stuff in the facilities down there. So, All right, Jake. Thanks for the call. 317-1250. Tommy is on the way to Wilmington. Hey, Tommy. Hey, y'all. Afternoon. Hey, man. I uh, just listening to the show on the way back. and wasn't going to really call in. I call in every now and then. But um, what happened today was, and going to keep happening, people calling, what happened, what happened, what happened? Uh, it's the offensive defensive line, y'all. And you can see it. Coach me and see it. I mean, they just beat the dickens out of us on both sides of the ball. They did nothing fancy really all day long occasionally they blitzed on defense but mainly it was a bull rush it wasn't even a any stunts or anything like that they just bull rushed us and pushed us right back into holton all day long and 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 so that enables them to you know play different defensive backfield tighter coverages and it was tough we had our chances early on in the first half to when we i didn't like the when we were second and two, I think going into the second quarter, right around that, and uh, about midfield, a couple times when the defense did hold them down there, and we got the ball out of midfield, and we were like second and two, and Keaton Mitchell was in the game both second and third down, and we handed off to him second and third down, and we ended up on fourth down, and punted at midfield where the possession before we'd gone for it on fourth and five or six at the 45. So that didn't make a whole lot of sense, but the main thing to me was – Keaton in the game for two straight running downs. He's, I mean, he's a good back. I don't have anything. Uh, he's going to be a really good back. He's a game breaker with his speed. But Rajay should have been in there to me on that. But the difference today was, I mean, they were huge on the defensive line and quick. And like I said, they just were so strong. They just bull rushes all day long. And our offensive line just got <laughs> eaten up. And our defensive line and. Played pretty well for a while, but their offensive line was huge and good, and 
they ended up just blowing us off the ball in the second half, and uh, that's what the difference in the game was. And until we get bigger and stronger on the off- offensive line and more experience, too, and the defensive line. We're playing a lot of freshmen on the defensive line, but we're small. We've got to get stronger in the offensive line. Got to get stronger, too. But that's where the game was. Oh, and one other thing. I saw the thing that the, I think the guy that was talking about earlier um, about the punt return. I, I, I'm sure that, like Coach Smith was talking about, that he was coached that way, but he didn't put it. He, if it's the same one, I saw one. He raised his arm like he was about shoulder height, raised it up pretty quick, and like he was pointing to somebody, uh, like pointing to the guy, you know, block this guy or whatever. But he raised it up quick enough and high enough to where I could see where. Because I thought initially he may have called for a fair catch, but I think Coach Miz is exactly right. He was coached to do that. And actually got us on that, and the guy got about a 15-yard return out of it, right up the sideline, if it's the same one we're talking about. But anyway, I'm going to let you go. But there wasn't no secret to that game today. It was offensive, defensive line. That was where the game was won and lost. Y'all right. have a, a good evening. Enjoying the show. Thank you, Tommy. And, uh, All right. and, and, and no question about that. The, the question is, Last three games, we had a Raji Harris running for a hundred yards. Where, <laughs> what happened? Um, that looked like the Georgia State game. You know, going yeah. back to it, where we got blown off the ball, beat on both sides. It was bad. <laughs> it was it was bad. It was ugly. All right, three one seven twelve fifty. More with Coach Rick Smith. More of your calls when we return on the U.S. Sailor Fifth Quarter Call-In Show after this. While you're sleeping, our whole hogs are slow cooking over wood to create that bite that Eastern North Carolina is known for. I'm Sam Jones, and for more than three generations, my folks have been the torchbearers for what whole hog barbecue is supposed to be. At Sam Jones, you'll find plenty of smoke, but no mirrors. Everything, and I mean everything, is made fresh daily, including our sides, sweets, and sauces. Come on over and see us at Sam Jones Barbecue, and I bet you'll be able to taste our passion in just one bite. Sam Jones Barbecue, Fire Tower Road. This is Martin Truex Jr., and as a NASCAR Cup Series champion, I love one-stop shopping. When I need fresh tires or fuel during a race, my pit crew takes care of everything. Off the track, I have an auto owner's independent agent. They handle all my insurance in one place. Car, home, life, and business. Get your own pit crew and find a local agency with auto owner's insurance. This is Norm Bryant with Town Insurance in Greenville. Call me today at 756-8300. Go Pirates! Hey, Pirate fans, it's another home game week for ECU football, and UBE wants to get you ready. Whether you're going to the game or tailgating at home, they'll be open this Saturday from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. and special Sunday hours this weekend from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Come in the store this Saturday or Sunday, and with any $50 purchase, you get a free ECU bar cap. But once again, that's just this Saturday and Sunday, and in-store purchases only. UBE, serving the Pirate Nation for over 50 years years. Let's turn a trip to the branch into a tap on your phone. Let's hit pause on a lost debit card without hitting pause on life. That's how First National Bank is redefining convenience with a top-rated mobile app that puts more security and control at your fingertips and friendly people to help you succeed right by your side. Let's get started at fnb-online.com or your local First National Bank. FNB member FDIC. 2020 certainly hasn't been the year many of us were hoping for, but one thing has stayed the same. I'm Tim Sutton with Greenville Auto World, and our commitment to our customers has never wavered. Let Greenville Auto World show you how easy it is to buy a quality used car in Greenville. We believe in fair prices, superior service, and treating customers right leads to satisfied repeat buyers. Your vehicle is a big investment, and our customers trust us to keep them up and running with outstanding service and value. But Greenville Auto World, cross some hardies at Bells Fork. Hey, this is Jay from Villa Verde. Did you know the Villa Verde opened up its second location? Yes, it's Villa Verde Dos on Arlington Boulevard across the hospital. This new location is a fast, casual environment where you can make your own bowls for only $9.95. Choose from our fresh ingredients, from our toppings bars, or enjoy an amazing rotisserie chicken. We promise you can be in and out in less than 15 minutes. For a quick, healthy meal at an affordable price, visit us at Villa Verde Dos on Arlington Boulevard. Villa Verde, a platform for good. 
In studio with Gloria from Kinetic Physical Therapy, what kind of wellness services do you guys offer? We have massage therapy with your choice of either a relaxation massage, a therapeutic stretching session, or a prenatal massage. We have foot reflexology. We partner with Pirate Cryo for cryotherapy, also known as cold therapy, and we have health and wellness coaching. And if you're interested in holistic body therapy and saving money, we encourage you to check out our wellness membership plan where you can have all of our wellness services at a constant discounted price. You can learn more today at kptonline.com. This is Marcus Crandall, former ECU Pirate and Grey Cup champion. And you're listening to Pirate Radio, the voice of the Pirate Nation. You're listening to the U.S. Cellular 5th Quarter Postgame Call-In Show. Here's Clip Brock. Now, with the Pirate Radio scoreboard, here's Shirley Rhodes. All right, uh, Boston College is uh, hanging on to a 13-6 lead over Syracuse in the fourth quarter. Marshall cruising over UMass right now is 31-10 in the third. Appalachia State has a 21-10 lead over Texas State in the first half. Georgia leads Florida 14-1 in the first quarter. Cincinnati has an early 7-0 lead over Houston. It's Oklahoma 14, Kansas nothing in the second quarter. TCU just scored a touchdown, extra point pending, and uh, currently it's 9-0 over Texas Tech in the second quarter. Mississippi State has a 14-0 lead over Vanderbilt. The Fighting Montgomerys of Maryland lead Penn State 14-0 in the second quarter. Oklahoma State and Kansas State are underway. No score as of yet. Pittsburgh has a 3-0 lead over Florida State in the first quarter. It is UNLV 10, Fresno State 6 in the second, and Minnesota leads Illinois 7-0. And that is a look at your scoreboard. Now let's head back into the U.S. Cellular fifth quarter postgame call and show. Here's your host, Clip Brown. All right, thank you, Shirley Rhodes. I was trying to get your attention on the uh, Florida-Georgia score. First of all, you said uh, the score was 14-1, to which would have been Did hilarious. I? Oh, no, it was 14-7 I know you to meant seven. Seven. in uh, the first quarter. But Florida just scored to tie it up. They were down 14-0. Quick answer from the Gators, and uh, they got a ball game going in Jacksonville. And good grief, Maryland fourteen to nothing over Penn State. On Penn State, man, that's a shocker. All right, three one seven twelve fifty. We have some open lines if you want to chime in on today's game. Let's hear the thoughts of Brian Bailey from WNCT Channel Nine. Bailey, we were wrong about this one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we were really wrong about this one. And, then, you know, when you look at it, I, I really didn't think it was so much of a Tulsa hangover as it was, you know, playing a team that, you know, as Coach Houston has said a lot of this year, when you play an experienced team, you know, you have days like this when you're when you're inexperienced. And I think that we saw a lot of that today. The Pirates couldn't get anything cranked up offensively till the end. Uh, Cincinnati rushed for almost 300 yards, just gassed East Carolina a number of times running the football. And they actually, it was one of the old days of setting up the run with the pass because they threw it really well early. And then they just, you know, ran the football at will. And when you give up almost 300 on the ground and you only gain about 40 on the ground, you're going to have a long day at the office. And that's what it turned out to be. Yeah, Brian, and again, we, we all saw it happen, and, and Coach Smith and I were looking at the uh, the dreadful numbers on the UBE stat sheet, all the yards they had running the football. I had to look it up, Brian. If we gave up 277 to Tulane, how many did we give up against Navy? Navy had 288 <laughs> rushing yards, and they ran the ball 57 times. 57 times. They averaged, Navy yeah. averaged 5.1 yards a crack running the ball against us and these boys that we played today averaged 8.1 which is three yards more <laughs> navy's gonna be hiring that offensive coordinator <laughs> yeah uh I, I don't know i didn't see this one coming uh brian i didn't see it either because i really thought that the team had turned the corner as far as you know they, they came so close and should have won that game obviously and then you come out, and it reminded me a lot of last year, the Tulsa game at the end of the season at Dowdy Pickling Stadium. When, you know, you really thought that the Pirates were going to finish strong and, and, you know, carry on into the offseason on a high note. And they really didn't play very well in that game. And, and, and they didn't play very well at all, especially early in the game. Uh, they overcame a couple of mistakes, but, uh, by the time they got the offense cranked up, it was pretty much, you know, the game was pretty much over. Um, uh, you know, and, you know, it's one of those things, they get the onside kick, and they really weren't back in the game when they got the onside kick, and they gave the ball right back after that. So, 
I just think we saw we saw the offensive line that plays so well against Tulsa. They just, for whatever reason, they couldn't keep anybody out of the backfield, and Holton was running for his life, and it turned into an ugly day. And it's weird to say right now, about an hour and a half after this game, but I feel like they're gonna they're gonna bounce back next week, Brian, and then put together a good performance against Cincinnati. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it, se- it seems like when they're down and everything's going against them, they come out play well. When everything's going pretty decent and you feel pretty good, things go to hell. Uh, but I, I don't know. I feel like I know one thing: it's not going to be a fun week of practice uh, for those guys. No, it's not going to be a fun week of practice, and uh, it's not going to be. You know, you watch. I'm watching Cincinnati play right now, and, and they are really good, and they're really good defensively. They're just they're bottling up everything Houston tries to do. Uh, so it's going to be a you know it's Friday the 13th. Kind of <laughs> you kind of joke about that, but uh, a Friday night in the American, and it, I, it it will be a long week of practice, a short week, I and mean, you have to go you know play a Friday night game, and you kind of feel for the guys. They just and in this game. You know, it just seemed like they really weren't in the game early on, and it just yeah. carried over. Yeah, got down seven nothing, immediately tied it, and then ECU didn't score until you know pretty much when the game was over, right? So it was uh, a rough day at the office, and one we did not expect to see after the performance against Tulsa last week. And, and it's so hard to win in this league anyway, and, and you kind of look around and, and you know where are you going to find the wins? I mean, it's just it's just tough to up to get them and you got to get you got to get through this hump some of these growing pains and and you know they keep they keep happening some of the things that that, that have really has really limited this team and so they've got to you know figure out a way to, to bounce back and, and i think you're right i think we'll see a much better effort against cincinnati i think it's going to take a tremendous effort to stay in the game with the bearcats because they've got so much to play for and and so i'm sure they'll be fired up at home and uh continue to watch this cincinnati game i mean this uh, houston game with cincinnati and, yeah See if they can stay undefeated, and, it, and the things, that, the way things should shake out this week, they may be, they should be in the top five. Somebody's going to lose between Notre Dame and Clemson. Yep. Which you know, if it's Clemson, they might not, you know, they may not be a slot open, but you know, Georgia's in a tough game, so there's some games out there. Yeah, we're talking about uh, ECU taking on the top five team uh, coming up six days from now. Yeah. Uh, all right, Bailey. Well, uh, hey, look, maybe your Cowboys will win a game tomorrow, right? I was just thinking. <laughs> hey, I made I made a crucial mistake today. I wore I, the best mask that I have is is one I got through New Era, and it's got the Cowboy Star on the side of it, which I bought early in the season. Thought it'd be great to wear. The most comfortable mask, one that fits the best. Wear it today. If I had a dollar for every time I heard somebody yell, "How about them Cowboys?" <laughs> America's team. <laughs> I'm a rich man. <laughs> Bailey, uh, on at my expense. What you got? You know what you got coming up Monday yet on the Brian Bailey show? Yes, Trip Weaver's going to join us. He's okay. going to uh, join us uh, coming up at noon on uh, uh, Monday, and it's about to be fun to talk to him and uh, get some, you know, get ready for the Cincinnati game. And I know it's it's going to be, like you said, it's going to be a tough week. I mean, yeah. We should know more about you know how the team reacts to to the loss by then. You know, they'll get together tomorrow, and uh, then you know Monday they'll have practice later on in the afternoon, but. Uh, Usually the guys, as Coach can tell you in there, the guys usually bounce back quicker than the fans do or the coaches do. And I can tell you that, that Coach Houston was not happy at all in that post-game interview. Those, those post-game interviews are a little tricky. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Whenever you get a game like that. But, yeah. uh, you know, Coach is, I'll give you this, man. Coach is a stand-up guy, and, and he was, you know, he wants nothing more than to turn this thing around. And, and he understands some of the steps you have to take, and this was another one. Well, I, I can assure you that, I honestly think that Coach Houston, going into this game today, he thought they were ready to play. And he's standing on the sideline, you know, going out there the second half, and he's wondering, what in the world did we do wrong? Uh, And the kids honestly thought they were ready to play. And, and, and again, I tell you all, I've been there. It's something that sometimes happens when you're going through – you know this building program and again i've said this on the show many times you know winning's a habit unfortunately so is losing and you know we've lost here for five or six years and it's just tough uh and and you know like i mentioned alabama earlier you know winning is a habit there uh they just don't accept losing and uh Sometimes Alabama plays people that honestly have better players than they have. But and I use them because, you know, they're predominantly always winning. 
And it's the same thing in the old Green Bay uh, Packers day, you know, back in those days. I mean, winning is truly a habit. And sometimes because winning is a habit, that team wins. And a team that it's not a habit yet, you know, I'm sorry, but we hadn't won here in five or six years. I get frustrated as a, a baseball fan. And, Bailey, you play uh, the Cubs, play the Cardinals a lot. It don't matter who's in those Cardinal uniforms. Sometimes they got me and you out there, and they always win. And it sounds like what Coach Smith is talking about, just the, I guess, the culture of a, here, the organization. Here's exactly what the, temp, the uh, two-line coaches told their kids. Okay, guys, we are three and four. We've got four games left. We can beat. We can beat East Carolina. That's the first team we got to beat to be four and four. And we got three games left. We got Army at home. That's a win. We're five and four. We got Tulsa on the road. We may lose that one, but we don't know that for sure. We got Memphis at home. We're going to win that one. We're six and five. We're going to a bowl. But in order to get to that bowl game, we got to beat East Carolina. And that was the difference the way those kids played today. They were playing for a bowl game today, and they're going to play for a bowl game the rest of the year. And I think what Coach said about you know winning is, is, is a habit. I think some of the other great examples that maybe the younger fans would understand. Or in the '90s, it was the Cowboys that did that. The Steelers had had it going in, in their heyday, and, and most recently the Patriots. How many times you watch the Patriots play a football game and, and you watch it and you're like, how in the world did they win that game? Yeah. But yeah. it's a habit, and they would win the game. Yeah. And Brady and Belichick would come through, and they would win another one. And, so I think I think that's that has a lot to do with it. And you got you know we talked about it last week with the Tulsa game. Coach Houston has to get this team at a point where you can overcome you know a bad call or two, and it doesn't lose the game for you. And that's that's the, the next step in this hurdle. And again, I want to go back and just mention maturity of your football team. Now again, I mentioned it earlier, but their football team they're starting twenty two, three graduate students. They've been on campus for six years. Yeah, they got. Two red shirt seniors been on the campus five years. They got seven seniors. They've been on campus four years. They got four red shirt juniors. They've been on campus four years, and they got four juniors. That's their starters. They got nineteen yeah. starters that have been on the campus for four or more years. And what'd you say when you were leaving the show yesterday? And Morgan came in. You said uh, that's going to be us next year and in twenty twenty two. We're young right now, but we're gonna we're gonna get old, Bailey, and hopefully stay old, like Joe Dooley wants to do. That's what I was gonna say. That's the quote Joe Dooley says. <laughs> get old and stay old. old, and you gotta stay old. Yeah. And that's what happened. That's what happened to me when I turned thirty. <laughs> yeah. I got old, and I've stayed old. <laughs> well, at least you're still alive. <laughs> that's true, Coach. Amen. That's true. Long as you're breathing, you got a chance. <laughs> got a chance. Bailey, thanks for joining us early this morning on the pregame show, and thanks for uh, joining us late this afternoon, early evening on the postgame. We appreciate it man anytime and this this thing is going to turn around we just gotta we just gotta go back to the patient scale and be patient yeah all right bb thank you man there's brian bailey joining us on the fixed nc live line more to go and more of your calls on the u.s sailor fifth quarter call-in show we'll be back with you after this Warren's Hot Dog Pizza, homemade lemonade. Hey, Pirate Nation, Warren's Hot Dogs, two locations are open for business in Greenville and Chocowinity. Both locations have drive through windows, so stop by today for hot dogs, pizzas, subs, apple and peach turnovers, homemade lemonade, and breakfast in Chocowinity, featuring homemade cheese, ham, and chicken biscuits, plus sausage dogs, and more. Warren's in Greenville, across from Ron Ayers Motorsports, and in Chocowinity, next to the fire department. Warren's Hot Dogs, one Get some, get some. Weekdays are a great time to visit North Carolina State Parks. The best time to learn about nature is to be able to look, listen, and feel its natural beauty. A visit to the North Carolina State Parks is perfect for homeschoolers, scout groups, and teachers looking for a fun field trip during the week. You'll be amazed at all the natural wildlife you'll see when you experience the beauty of each North Carolina State Park. Visit ncparks.gov to get all the information on the closest park near you. 
If you are push mowing your yard using an inefficient lawn tractor or your current zero turn spends more time in the shop than mowing your grass, it's time you look at a Hustler zero turn lawnmower. Residential mowers from Hustler are built like tanks and drive like sports cars. All Hustler mowers have fabricated welded steel decks. Don't settle on cheap units with flimsy stamped decks from big box stores. Come see Ron Ayers Motorsports and we'll guide you to the right mower for your property and your budget. Find us at Ron Ayers Motorsports Highway 11 North of the airport in Greenville. Do you think you might have been exposed to COVID-19? Maybe you're planning to visit parents, family, or friends. Arc Point Labs of Greenville offers same-day COVID-19 results. No referral needed. Same-day results available. Arc Point Labs of Greenville offers easy solutions to COVID-19 testing. Arc Point Labs of Greenville is located across from Biden Hospital on Executive Circle behind Southern Bank. Call for an appointment or walk in. Arc Point Labs of Greenville, 215-5688 or arcpointlabs.com. Can't make it to the game? Relax. Caustic Sug Furniture can provide you with the best seats in the house. We have the area's largest selection of Lazy Boy motion furniture in stock and ready to go. Lazy Boy recliners, reclining sofas, love seats, and reclining sectionals in hundreds of colors, styles, fabrics, and leather. All at a very comfortable price. Remember, when it comes to Lazy Boy motion furniture, we're your ticket to the best seats in the house. Caustic Sug Furniture in Greenville. The fun place to dine out with friends and family is Familia. Familia has something for everyone and offers favorites like New York style pizza, lasagna, homemade meatballs, plus new specials like chicken parm alfredo, mahi fish and chips, chicken piccata, veggie burger, butternut squash ravioli, and more. If you need food to go, Familia's drive through window is open and ready for all takeout orders. Familia, Fire Tower Road near Pitt Community College and FamiliaNC.com. The Frells family lives on a lush piece of land called Greener Pasture, and they work on it behind the wheel of a John Deere 1 Series tractor. With its durable construction and features that hook up to dozens of attachments with ease, no job is too tough. The Frells family runs with us, because this is more than just land, it's home. Nothing runs like a deer. Search John Deere 1 Series for more. Get quality at every turn with quality equipment. Your local John Deere dealer with 27 locations in North Carolina and Southeastern Virginia. Find out more at qualityequip.com. Hi, this is Morgan Aylers, and you're listening to Pirate Radio, the voice of the Pirate Nation. You're listening to the U.S. Cellular 5th Quarter Postgame Call-In Show. Here's Cliff Brock. All right, 317-1250, the number on the U.S. Cellular 5th Quarter Call-In Show, and we have open lines if you want to jump in. We'll get to our Brown and Wood Drive of the Game, brought to you by Brown and Wood, serving the Pirate Nation in eastern North Carolina for over 83 years. Brown and Wood has four brands, three generations, two showrooms, and one goal that you leave a happy customer every time. Brown and Wood on Greenville Boulevard, Greenville, and online, brownandwoodalto.com. Uh, drive of the Game, I'll go with the first drive of the game for the Pirates, who uh, were down 7 nothing, got the football, and went down the field and scored. And at that point in the game, it looked like we were going to get a shootout, and then both defenses decided to show up for a little while. Uh, Tulane did add 14 in the second quarter and had a 21-7 to lead. ECU, after that first score and after that beautiful drive, did not score again until the fourth quarter. So, Coach, I know you put together your drive summaries, your drive charts there, and there's not a lot to look at uh, today. First series, 11 play, 75-yard touchdown. There you go. I'm excited. We're going to kick their butt. Four, next okay. series, four plays, five yards, punt. Next series, five plays, punt. Next series, we go for it on fourth down at the fourth play. We yeah. get stopped. Then the next, we go 11 plays. We miss a field goal. Then it's two plays and a half. Second, second half, five plays, punt. Three plays, punt. Four plays, punt. Uh, series 12, five plays, punt. Then we scored the 13th series. Uh you know, we just uh, and you said earlier if if they're having that many possessions, that means you're either scoring fast or you're, or you're, you're punting. Pu- a you're lot. punting fast, punting on third, three and out. And that was kind of the thing about yeah. today. This is not one of those games where you had wacky turnovers and we're giving it up. The Pirates had one fumble at the end of the game. That was the only turnover. Okay, you look at the. This is why we played so many all right, four plays. This was the uh, our offense four plays. Series, five play series, four play series, two plays, five plays, three plays, punt, 
four place punt, five place punt. Uh, fourth down, we go fourth play of a series. We go for it on fourth down. We don't make it. Uh, and then we scored the 15th series. We fumbled on the 16th series. So how many first downs? Let me look that up uh, if I can find out. Uh, well, 20 first downs, but it's, you know, you, you talked about it. What do you call it? The the P and 10 or the possession, uh, which is the first down of a new series. Right. And then the, a first down is just the first down within that series. Yeah. It just could not get drives going today. Yeah. Uh, and a lot of times, because they were bagged up, they try to run the ball on first down. It'd be second and nine or second yeah. and twelve. You know. You know, one of the goals I I have I've, I have a goal chart. You know, from one of the goals is, uh, you know, make four yards or more on first down when you run the football. They now, did that twice off memory today, and I know, think that's it. And if you do that, you, you're not going to do it every time, but you'd like to do it seventy percent of the time. So if you've got you know, say you had 14 possession first downs. That's the first play of a new series. You know, and you run the ball, say, eight times. You'd like to make at least five times, you know, where you make that goal. Oh, man. 317-1250. Tough sledding today for the Pirates. John is up in Kitty Hawk. Hey, John. Uh, welcome from uh, Kitty Hawk down here in Paradise. and It's a great place to be. I wish I was there. In there. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to watch the game with you next time. There you go. There you go. You're welcome. Uh, I, I'm going to mention something that I'm not sure people really want to hear, but it it pretty much goes back to talent. And we just do not have the talent on the lines that is necessary to win at this level, in my opinion. Now, Mo was dismal. I mean, you can just scratch all of that off. But as Coach Smith mentioned, linemen are the most difficult people to recruit. And if you don't recruit them and don't get them, you can't expect to be good unless they take four years to develop, and maybe by the time they're a senior, if they're not how recruited, they'll be good players. And we are young now. I will give, give them that. And But really, overall, I've been keeping up with recruiting longer than you've been living, Cliff. And uh, that's the thing that makes the difference. And we certainly haven't done it well lately. Now, we have on skilled people, we get very high quality people, but linemen are the ones that make the difference. And in my opinion, and uh, until we can do that, it, it's going to be very difficult to win in this league. Are you familiar? Um, are you familiar with Jacksonville, Florida, at all? A little bit. I'm just going to, you know. One of the largest cities in the country, if not the largest city in the country, with probably 27 high schools within the city limits. And you go down there recruiting, it takes you three days just to cover Jacksonville, and out of the whole city of Jacksonville, there might be four offensive linemen that are good enough to play. Well, guess who all is in there recruiting those four kids? Everybody in the country. It, again, offensive linemen and defensive linemen are the hardest to find. It's just defensive backs are everywhere. Running backs are everywhere. But offensive linemen and defensive linemen, and you can make a defensive lineman. You, you can sign a six foot four guy that weighs 220 pounds out of high school, and maybe you can get him up to 260. But to find a six foot four, six foot five offensive lineman that's, that you can put on enough weight to where he's a 300 pounder. Well, that's just a lot harder. And all the years I recruited, the longer I, the more years I coached, the more years I recruited, the hardest thing to find is offensive linemen. I mean, there's just not enough of them. And for you to get one, uh, I mean, it's, it's just really tough to find them. And then you hope that you get one that doesn't have to play for two years, you know, because that's one that's of the right. toughest, that's one of the toughest positions to learn. Because of all the defensive schemes and people moving before the ball snapped and blitzes, uh, 
I always felt like the toughest two positions to coach was the offensive line and the defensive backs. Uh, and, you know, I think Steve Shankweiler is as, as good an offensive line coach as there, in, there is in America. Uh, he inherited a complete mess because uh, we were supposed to sign seven offensive linemen uh Montgomery's last year here, and we signed three. We, year, we year, went over those yeah. numbers, Coach. And even, first of all, the numbers were down. Oh. Secondly, the retention was off on that. You yeah. had a lot of guys leaving for different reasons. Yeah. So they are depleted there. They just don't have enough depth right now in the offensive line. The kids they're playing with hadn't played a lot. So uh, I'm telling you, give 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 uh, Steve Shankwell enough time. We'll have a great offensive line like they had when Skip Holtz was here. And uh, – we will get this, uh, not we, but they will get this program where we want it. I believe that. It's just right now it's a real struggle. Yeah, right now you just and feel like turning the TV off. <laughs> you didn't do that, did well, you? No, 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 no. I, I just went to the, the kitchen. And, I went to the kitchen and popped the top. <laughs> <laughs> Might have done that. Uh, and one quick other uh, point. We talk about financial support. We have 130,000 living alumni. We, be, we are lucky to have this year 5,000 Pirate Club members, and they are all not alumni. Now, that doesn't include the student Pirate Club that inflates it when they put out numbers. And they're not, they're not supporting the program, and... Quite honestly, there are times we have people who've got a great tailgating school. We have people that come, park, tailgate, don't give a dime, get in the car and go home and watch the game. And until people realize that it's not a free ride, you know, we're going to always be struggling financially. And I try to beat it in people's head all the time. If you want a big program or if you want a good program, then you've got to make a sacrifice. How much does it mean to you should equate what you get? And that has not happened and hadn't happened. I mean, we've got people like Vince McMahon who are multi-billionaire. My, my college roommate is a billionaire. They give nothing. Not a dime. And, you know, until we can find people that can do something and, and the average person give what they're capable of giving, is it's going to be a struggle. But I'll get off the phone, and uh, you guys have a great evening, and we'll see if we can't do better next week. All right, John. Thank you for the call today. Appreciate it. There's John and Kitty Hawk. All right, 317-1250. From John to Owen in Tampa. Oh, and what do we uh, do to deserve this phone call? I haven't heard from you in a while. Uh, I wanted to check on Coach Smith, man. The man said punt so many times during his drive summaries, I thought he had Tourette. <laughs> coach, coach, for those of us who are uh, not up to date on all of our football vocab, is it true that the RPO stands for run punt obligation? Because that is the offense we are running. <laughs> I'm going to write that one down. <laughs> well, I, so I haven't really listened to a lot of calls. I'm sure everybody's had the same thing to say. I just, I don't understand what's going on out there because, I mean, Mike Houston must be the calmest man in the world because he never panics. I mean, down 24 in the fourth quarter, no problem. We'll run it up the middle. I mean, I don't get that. What What am I missing? I mean, he wanted to air it out with five minutes left to go. I mean, great job, but the king of garbage time, but tell me what I'm missing because I don't see it. A couple of things on that. I mean, I, I, what about before first half? They, they didn't take a timeout. I thought they could have saved some of the clock and maybe tried to score at the end of the half. And, again, they punt from two lanes, 47-yard line, on like a fourth and seven uh, in the fourth quarter. So some strange decisions there. Uh, I, I, I agree with you. I, I thought there would be more of a sense of urgency in some of those situations. What I agree. Think, Coach? I agree. Yeah. Uh, you know, if you're getting your butt kicked, go for it on fourth down. I mean, nobody remembers, you know, next January, nobody remembers the scores. All they remember is 
Well, we won four and we lost six. They don't remember. Well, that one we lost, we lost by 60. They don't remember the scores. They just remember one wins and losses. So if I'm getting my butt kicked and it's fourth down and two and I'm on, you know, 60 yards away, I'll probably go for it. I mean, why, why, it doesn't matter what you lose by. Yeah. A loss is a loss. A win's a win. What else? Why don't we be more aggressive? Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. I mean, you. This in the coach's calling show, Owen. This is me and Coach Smith. I don't want. What do you want me hey, to tell you? Come on, uh, you, give me some coach speak. If I'm gonna call that damn show. I don't care that trash. Owen, we're taking uh, it one day at a time. Owen, one day at a time. We are not. We are not taking it one day at a time. I can I'm remember. Tired of getting demolished for what is it? Five years, six yeah. years, whatever the hell it is. I'm tired of it. I know. You know yeah. I don't call no more. It's, it's, I know. It's why Scotty Montgomery sucked the life out of my damn soul. Bless. I mean, hey, tell me about it. <laughs> yeah, I know. You, you, you look dead every time you talk about him, Rick. Oh, I spent one I year mean, with that guy. I, I'm tired of it, and I understand, oh, you got to be patient, yada, yada, yada. But I don't care. I don't. I want to win a damn ball game. Well, I was only with Mc, I was only in the program one year with Montgomery. Oh, but you got I'm, lucky, didn't you? Well, I just retired. And, yeah, I don't but, blame you. But, you know, I was old enough to retire, and I just couldn't do it another year with that guy. Matter of fact, I went in after three games and, and resigned, and he asked me to stay until the end of the year. But if it's just what he did to the program, it's going to take a while now. I'm telling you, nobody knows how bad it was unless they were in that building. And I was only in the building for a year, and he was here two years after that. So... uh what Coach Houston inherited, nobody realizes how bad it it was when he walked in that building for the first time. And bless his heart, you know, I feel for him because he's a hell of a football coach. And I know if he stays here, he's going to get it going. People just need to be patient. Uh, and I've said this a million times, you know. Winning's a habit. Unfortunately, so is losing. And, and our kids lose games. But I think sometimes they just freeze up and they, they expect to lose. Well, I mean, I, I understand where you're coming from. And, I mean, believe me, Scotty, Scotty Montgomery retired a bunch of us. I can promise you that. But, it, you know, we had our struggles with him. And then, and I believe what you're saying about the tough rebuild for, for Mike Houston. I get it. And, but the whole patience thing, after a while, man, people just I they give up. I do understand that. And it would... As a fan, like I said, I haven't played a down of football since I was like 10 years old, and I don't coach or any of that stuff, so I ain't, I ain't trying to claim to know everything. It's just, if, if you're out there when you're down 24 in the fourth quarter and you're slinging the ball all over the place like we used to, that tells me we're trying to score and get back in this thing. But if you just run it up the middle and let the clock keep going down so you can get out of there and go home, <clears throat> that, as a fan, that doesn't send me a, a good message. I I hear you, Owen. I do, uh, and I, I I agree. I thought there was some. I thought that they that no sense of urgency there uh, towards the end in some spots. And again, it wasn't like fourth and fifteen at your own fifteen. It was on the Tulane side of the field, fourth and seven. Yeah. That one in particular. But it's good to hear your voice. I know it's not in good circumstance, though, Owen. Ah, Cliff, do I ever call in good circumstances? I'm a Debbie Downer. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> I, I, I think my I think my spiel plays a lot better when things are bad. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Owen. Well, great to hear from you, man. All right, boys. Y'all take it easy. All right. He's uh, he's one of the uh, the greats from yesteryear, Owen in Tampa. Uh, Josh and Kathy, hang on. Let's take another time out. We'll come back. We'll get to your calls right when we return on the U.S. Sailor Fifth Quarter Call-In Show. We're back after. Sawyer's Fun Park is now open in Greenville. This state-of-the-art 40,000-square-foot facility features a two-story LED interactive laser tag, a -a one-of-a-kind two-story ninja course, a ropes course with a 180-degree zip line, and it's only one of five in the country that are indoors, multiple climbing walls, a super cool arcade with 40-plus games, and a brand-new full-service cafe and bar for adults. Visit the brand-new Sawyer's Fun Park, now open, located right behind ARU on Corey Road. Road, Greenville. It's bow time. <laughs> the barbecue sandwich from Bojangles is back. Wait, wait. Bojangles has barbecue? Yeah, keep going. Well, okay then. 
We're talking tender pulled pork with a tangy Carolina vinegar kick. Unforgettably topped with our country coleslaw, all on perfectly toasted buns. So if you're like me and missed it last time, get your hands on a barbecue sandwich combo pronto. It's bow time. Let us help you get back to business. This is Donald Stocks and Justin Judge of PIP of Eastern North Carolina. We're ready to assist your business with branded PPE. Would you like face masks with your logo? We can do that. Plus custom social distancing signage. Now is the time to ramp up your marketing efforts. Whether it's cutting edge, contactless, touchless marketing, or traditional direct mail, we can do it all. We are PIP of Eastern North Carolina. Hey, Pirate Nation, this is proud ECU graduate and former baseball player Brandon Manning inviting you to join my team at Farm Bureau Insurance. Right now, during hurricane season, is a good time to review your coverage with a local trusted agent like me. I will make myself available before or after business hours, and my clients always have my cell phone number if they need anything. From home, auto, or life, give me a call today and let's talk about your insurance coverage and about the Pirates. Call 531-1812 and go Pirates! You don't need a big meeting. You don't need a birthday. You don't need any excuse at all. You just need to love subs. Times 12. Order the Jersey Mike's catering box today. Jersey Mike's. Be a sub above. Love Jersey Mike's subs? Love them times 12 with our new catering box. Packed full of a dozen individually wrapped subs. They're yours for the sharing. Jersey Mike's. Be a sub above. Banking is banking until service is not the same. This is Eric Clark from Select Bank and Trust, and this year has been unusual, but we have continued to focus on what has always been important to us, our customers. When businesses needed access to the Paycheck Protection Program, our team of local bankers worked around the clock to successfully keep our customers open and their employees working. Wouldn't you like to deal with a bank that is responsive to your needs, can make local decisions, and cares about you, the customer? We are Select Bank and Trust. Bank local, bank select. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. This is Brian Packard, ECU former baseballer. You're listening to Pirate Radio, the voice of Pirate Nation. You're listening to the U.S. Cellular fifth quarter postgame call-in show. Here's Clip Brock. Alrighty, we still got calls coming in, and we are with you till the last caller is served on the U.S. Cellular fifth quarter call-in show. If you got a question or comment for Coach Rick Smith, you can dial in 317-1250. Uh, Kathy, hang on. Let's go to Josh in Greenville next. Hey, Josh. Hey, Cliff. Look, I'm going to make a, a, a quick point real quick, and then I'll let y'all uh, discuss it. As a 100% Pirate fan, I'm I'm so tired of hearing the quotes that nobody came here to lose. At some point, you actually have to prove that. Like, I don't know if it was, I mean, I'll leave you to that. Yeah, yeah, All I right. can tell much what you think. Yeah, I, look, I, and again, you know, Rick Smith said, he said something that's true, which is we have to be patient. The, uh, it's also true that it's tough to be patient when you've lost yeah, five years is. in a row. Both of those things are true, uh, but we, we do, and... And just like you said, Josh, you don't want to hear nobody came here to lose. That is also true, but we want to see wins and not moral victories or close losses, actual wins. And it's frustrating. Let's just remember that the head football coach was not here those previous five or six losing seasons. So This is year two. This is not all his fault. He is doing everything he can turn this program around and i can assure you that he's hurting more right now than any fan and he has to go back to work tomorrow and look those kids in the face and try to get them ready to play another game and i i'm telling you one day we're gonna be begging that guy to stay here because he's gonna get this program turned around 317-1250 kathy is up in greenville hey kathy Hey, I was just going to make a comment. There have been a couple of callers that talked about money and facilities and those kinds of things. And obviously, people have to be motivated to give money. And there's a couple ways to do that. One is obviously winning. You get people winning, you get people wanting to come to games, and they'll join the Pirate Club and you give money. But that's out of our control. What's in our control is what the Pirate Club can do 
to motivate people who wouldn't come to games. And I don't see a lot of that going on. Uh, I have college roommates across the state that won't come to games because they're just too far away. They say they're never approached by the Pirate Club. I'm the only one that ever talks to them about the Pirate Club. And then when they ask me what's the benefit of joining, if they can't come to games, you know, I don't have a really good answer for them. So we've got to come up with ways to motivate our proud alum now to to join and to support the programs that we have. I called the other day, probably the end of September, to get to pay student pirate club dues for my child that's at ECU, and they wouldn't take my money. They didn't have a way to do student pirate club. This was in September. We need to take every dime that we can find and motivate people to give money if we want to be able to improve our facilities and, and improve our money. There's not tons of money out there, but we do. To the caller that called before and said, we have a lot of alumni that, that need to give. He's right, but we've got to motivate them to give. And I'll take your comments off the air. Okay, Kathy, thank you for your call. If I'm not mistaken, we do not have a official director of the Pirate Club right now, you know, in-house. I believe we are working with an interim director, if I'm not mistaken. So, and we get these calls all the time, and, and you know, it, it, something has to be done to uh, to motivate folks to give money and to get involved in the program. Well, uh, I know this is going to sound like, you know, I'm repeating myself, but uh, winning heals a lot of wounds. And, yeah. you know, uh, go win. Go win. Go win some games. All right, 317-1250. Um, Todd Graffinini, our buddy, by the way, has tuned in. Former, uh, former Tulane play-by-play voice. And uh, he said, to tell Coach, it's been a pleasure to listen to him today. Todd's loving this, by the way. His team won. Our team lost. But he is a fan of Pirate Radio. He's a friend of mine. And uh, also showed off a nice two-lane championship ring. He said, show him show yeah, that pretty ring I got. I've got one of those. <laughs> so there you go. All right, uh, Graf, we appreciate you tuned in, man. Uh, 317-1250. Let's talk to WITN Sports Director Billy Weaver. Weave, I'll start this one the same way I started when we talked to Bailey about 30 minutes ago. Uh, we were a little bit off on this game. We, we weren't expecting today's outcome, right? Yeah, no. Was there an elephant behind you? What the hell was that? Transformer? Uh, that was, well, that was, um, I'm heading home right now, and that was about four or five motorcycle guys on those <laughs> right rockets. Oh, yeah, all you right. I didn't know the guys could hear that. Yeah, that's... As long as you're all right. Yeah, we're, we're no, good. No, no, I'm good. I'm all good. Right. It, was, it, was, uh, it was a gang of four, so <laughs> you got in and out quick. It was Tulane running all over you like they did the uh, Pirates today, <laughs> perhaps. You, you know what? We, we kind of set it up because we said this during our Zoom interview earlier this week that we did with the Pirate Radio crew. Uh, everybody picked... ECU to win this game, and I don't know who said it, but somebody said it's always bad. It may have been Meador, so I don't remember, but it's always bad when we're all on the same page on an ECU victory because something happens. And dang if it didn't, ECU, uh, yeah, they just they just couldn't get in rhythm offensively at all. Couldn't run the football when you've got 34 total rushing yards, you know, and you're a team that we thought had kind of turned the corner in the in the run game. Uh, you know, and thought, hey, we finally got a running game now, and it just disappeared today. That was that was the disheartening part to me is not being able to establish any sort of uh, rhythm offensively in the run game. I did point out, Billy, that the last time we were all on the same page picking the Pirates the same way, the Georgia State game happened. And this was <laughs> uh, somewhat similar to that game, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I, and... And Tulane's not a great team, but they're not a bad team either. I mean, they're they're pretty solid. They're, you know, their freshman quarterback. I was impressed with him. Their defensive line is really good. Um, and you know what I I had said in the keys of the game before the game that East Carolina's offensive line would have to protect Holton. They gave up five sacks today. Yeah. You know that's that's not unusual because a lot of teams give up sacks to Tulane because they're really good. That's there's a reason they're the best team in conference in the uh, American Athletic Conference right now in the sacks department. Um, And ECU gave up five of them. And another key to the game, I said, had to have been turnovers. And East Carolina got one turnover today. And, you know, if they'd have gotten another turnover and been able to establish the run 
and not giving up so many sacks and scored more and and this and that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can reel off, but, you know, a hundred different things. If they well, were done this, they could have won the game. There was one moment uh, in the game, I can't remember exactly when it was in the game, where Tulane fumbled the ball, recovered their fumble, and then the very next play was a touchdown. Yeah. And those are yeah. kind of like swing play, like momentum plays right there where you could have been off the field and your offense could have had the ball uh, with some momentum. Instead, they recover it. Next play, boom, uh, Tulane takes the lead. Well, there was another play like that, too, on the onside kick after they had scored the touchdown. Yeah. They got yeah. the onside kick back, and the very first play uh, was ruled a fumble by Holden Nailers, And, you know, they challenged the play as, uh, you know, Mike Houston challenged it and hoping that it was an incomplete pass, and that didn't uh, that didn't pan out. So that was another one of those swing plays. Yep, you're right. And Billy, now they uh, they don't have a lot of time to mope because they got uh, what's going to be a top five Cincinnati team coming up on Friday. Which again, shockingly, I feel like the Pirates are going to put together a good game against Cincinnati. You know, it's one of those feelings like when you're down and the chips are against you. That's kind of when the Pirates come out and play. Uh, maybe they were too lax heading into this one. I, I don't know. Uh, but uh, they, they just didn't show up today. Well, you know, Mike Houston kind of alluded to that in his post-game press conference saying that, you know, these guys were told all week that they got, you know, shafted out of a, a win at Tulsa and played well, and they were finally turning the corner and everything. And he he basically said it, that they didn't they didn't handle that right. They didn't He didn't feel like they handled it during the week handled the even though they were coming off a loss a lot of people were still patting these guys on the back and saying hey you guys played great uh it wasn't your fault you lost and we're finally turning the corner we can see it and he basically said the team didn't respond well they've got to they've got to learn how to win and they've got to learn how to take compliments and criticism and all that and kind of put everything aside and and coach can speak to this probably better than anybody else yeah you can, you can tell during practice, and it doesn't matter if your team has gotten beat down by the fans and saying they're the most horrible team in the world, or they're getting patted on the back because they're 5-0 and or they're 6-0 and and they're nationally ranked. Whatever the situation is, those players have to be able to handle and, and stay on an even keel, and coaches battle with that constantly, keeping those guys on an even keel. And in this day and age with social media, that's hard to do. Coach, what do you think? Uh, very good point. Uh, uh, you know, the kids, they just, they were still at, I guess, Tulsa. You said halfway from Tulsa yeah. to here. I wonder, yeah. you know, did they think they des- they they deserved a win today, Billy, with that, you know, because of what happened last week? Like, we, we they owe us one now, so we're not going to go take it kind of thing. I don't know. You know, they're, they, they should, they won the game last week and got screwed out of it. Okay, you're, Playing at home, you're playing Tulane, which is not a power. Uh, you know they're three and four or three and something yeah. coming in here, and I, 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 again I've been there. The, the 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 players thought they were getting ready mentally to play. I they practiced good according to Coach Houston. You know the practice week was good. Uh, but the kids were fooling themselves. They weren't ready to play mentally. They go out on the field. They think they're ready to play, and then all of a sudden they get hit in the mouth. And guess what? They weren't ready to play. But, <laughs> but you know, we took the first drive and went right down the field and scored. Yeah. And I think that the kids are saying, man, this is going to be easy. And then they lost a little bit of that concentration, and they got it stuck up their kazoo. Well, Coach, Coach, something that kind of bothers me a little bit is that East Carolina, if you look at especially this season, East Carolina does really well on the first drives of the game. They've scored on a lot of their first drives, and as you know, a lot of those first drives are are very scripted. Um, Maybe it's a little concerning that once you come off script, you have to make adjustments that... Maybe, I don't know if it's the, the coaches or the players or whatever that maybe are not making the right adjustments because, like you said, they, they've marched right down the field and scored, and they've done that a bunch this year. So um, I, I don't know if, if that's a deal where this team is more comfortable being on a script. Well, I've also, I've also been in that situation where, you know, you're standing on the sideline 
and your offense does what our offense did today. They just go right down the field, you know, and score. And all the kids, they say, man, this is going to be easy today. And then all of a sudden, they lose a little bit of their concentration. And then, you know, the opponent runs down and scores. And now you're in a battle, and your kids don't respond. Uh, yeah. It's just, you know, it's more of a head game than a lot of people think. Uh, and when you... Again, I mentioned it yesterday, and I mentioned it once today. They had 19 out of their starting 22. 19 of their their players were graduate students in their sixth year, seniors or juniors, and they were a much more mature team than us. And they were playing. I'm telling you, they're playing for their their coaching staff was telling them if we want to go to a bowl game, we got to win today. So they win today, and they got four wins. They can win the next two, so they got six. And you only need six to go. Uh, and they are an older team, uh, you know, 19 juniors and seniors on their starting 22. So uh, they wanted this one a lot worse than we did. All right, Weave. Uh, anything else before we let you run? No, I think those are all good points. You know, whenever you're dealing, you know, and that's the thing is whenever you're dealing with young guys, you yeah. got to remember these, these young guys are – uh, you know, when they're young coming in, some of them are 17, 18 years old and 19 years old. And when you're dealing with that, uh, it is. It's, it's, you, it's winning and losing both is a learning process. Uh, and it was very interesting because when I was leaving the stadium, I heard a couple of the parents talking and parents of the players. I don't know which player it was, but they were saying uh, that, you know, he's not used to losing because he, he won all the way through his high school. Well, these guys, these young guys have to learn that, you know, although they may have won state championships and, you know, won every year they were in their high school, this is a whole totally different thing. And some of these guys not only have to learn how to win, but they have to lose, learn how to lose and put it aside and, you know, live to play another day. That is right. Uh, and uh, they got to get ready quick uh, for a Cincinnati team that's – uh, about to run up the score on Houston if Houston ain't careful. Cincinnati uh, closing this half in a very strong way of 28-10 to 10 and just got another free possession with three seconds left trying to add to it. So we will be talking about that one uh, all next week uh, here with you on Pirate Radio Live and uh, we'll have a press box coming up as well uh, on Friday before our Bud Light pregame tailgate. So we'll talk to you then too. All right, sounds good, guys. You have a good one. Thank you, Billy. There's Billy Weaver, WITN Sports Director. All right, last call for your calls, 317-1250. Got one more segment to go. We'll do it after this. Jack Browns, what can I get you? Can I get a vodka soda with a lime, please? No liquor, just beer. We have beer out the wazoo. And we don't even know what a wazoo is. IPA, sours, gozas, wheat, stouts, porters, you name it, we got it. Drink 100 beers and join the Notch Club. Don't, don't be, be a nerd. nerd. Ask, Ask about, about the Notch Club. Club. Yeah, we've got the best craft beer in Greenville. Awesome. I'll take it back to us light. You got it. On the way. Jack Brown's Beer and Burger Joint, located at 805 Dickinson Avenue, right in the heart of Uptown Greenville. Get your ice cold Bud Light, Bud Light, Seltzer here. Even though you can't go to the game, doesn't mean the game can't be brought to you now, hip. Just go to BudLight.com slash delivery. That's BudLight.com slash delivery. Give me two bagels. Coming at you. It's a little short. Ow. Sorry. You know what? I'm just going to walk them over to you. Whenever there's a game to watch, there's a Bud Light there. Enjoy responsibly. Anheuser Bush, Bud Light Beer, and Bud Light Teltzer, IRC Beer, Beer in Texas, St. Louis, Missouri. The Rick House is Eastern North Carolina's premier American-styled restaurant and bar. Join us at the Rick House for mouth-watering steaks and the best burgers around. Check out the spicy mahi risotto or the bourbon pecan salmon. Wednesday night is date night. Two salads, an appetizer, a bottle of wine, two entrees, and a dessert for just $55. Thursday is ladies' night with $5 martinis and special apps. The Rick House, American provisions and spirits. 710 Red Banks Road beside the bowling alley in Greenville. The Rick House. 
Every team knows that the two-point play can be a winning move. That's why I'm here. State Farm agent Timothy Sawyer and my team are here to help you go for two by combining your home and auto insurance. It's a great call that saves you time and money. So go for the win and score some savings by combining your home and auto. It's just another way we're here to help life go right. Call me, Timothy Sawyer, at 493-0002 today. Classic sports moments never get old, and neither does classic food from CPW's. CPW's classic menu is back with all of your favorites like tortellini CPW's, Cajun chicken and pasta, classic lasagna, the garbage pizza, the stromboli, calzone, Atlantic salmon, the Cajun fried shrimp wrap, and more. Start every meal off with your favorite beverage and CPW's fresh baked bread and garlic butter. CPW's, serving classics in Greenville since 1995. Stanton Square near the hospital. Hidden phone trade-ins, hidden plan requirements, hidden catches. You won't find them at U.S. Cellular because we speak FAIR. Plus, when you switch right now, you can get the latest phones free. Upgrade to FAIR. Upgrade to U.S. Cellular. Requires new postpaid service plan, new line port, and credit approval. Qualified smartphone purchase and comes via monthly bill credit on a 30-month RIC. Taxes, fees, and additional terms apply. This is Brandon Tate, owner and operator of Atlantic Wireless, an authorized agent for U.S. Cellular since 1997. Visit AtlanticWireless.com to find the store near you. We go beyond the call. This is Big John Williams, strength and conditioning coach for East Carolina football, and you're listening to Pirate Radio, the voice of the Pirate Nation. You're listening to the U.S. Cellular 5th Quarter Postgame Call-In Show. Here's Clip Brock. Now, with the Pirate Radio scoreboard, here's Shirley Rhodes. All right, Boston College got a win over Syracuse today by a final of 16-13. to Marshall is drubbing UMass. 51-10 to is that score in the fourth quarter. Appalachian State leads Texas State 24-10. to It is Georgia trailing Florida 31-21. to Cincinnati has a 28-10 to lead over Houston. Oklahoma is leading Kansas 31-0. It is TCU 10, Texas Tech 3 at halftime. Mississippi State went into the locker room at halftime with a 17-0 lead over Vanderbilt. Maryland is at the half leading 28-7 over Penn State is Kansas State 6, Oklahoma State nothing. Florida State leads Pittsburgh 14-10. Minnesota has a 28-7 lead over Illinois at the half, and Fresno State leads UNLV 20-17 at halftime. And that is a look at your scoreboard. Now let's head back into the U.S. Cellular fifth quarter postgame call-in show. Here's your host, Clip Rock. All right, Charlie, well done all day long. It has been a long day, and Chandler has been here with us the entire time, too. Well done, Chan Man. As we got started bright and early this morning at 8 a.m., on the Bud Light pregame tailgate, and we're wrapping it up here soon, so get your calls in now. Last call for your calls, and uh, Brendan is up in Daytona Beach. Hey, Brendan. Hey, guys. This is my first time calling, but I like to listen to the show every week. Uh, I just have a question for Coach Smith. So, my first year at East Carolina was 2015, so rough last year. And, obviously, we won five games that year without our starting quarterback. We were competitive in several games, so they could have gone our way. I mean, we played Florida, you know, barely lost to them. That was the game that Kemp, the rain game that Kemp lost the ball. Um, you know, we lost, we beat Virginia Tech that year, barely lost to BYU. So my biggest question is, and I really can't wrap my head around, what changes in a year, culture-wise or scheme-wise or whatever, that makes a team like East Carolina, which is a proud, historically proud program, what makes them all of a sudden just go to three wins and a losing program the next year? I know, obviously, you brought in Coach Mo and he wasn't the best or whatever, but, you know, you look at UCF. We destroyed them that year. They went 44-7 to or something. What they, they won six games the next year after not even winning the game. Like, so what happened? Well, you know, when Coach Ruff was here, uh, I can't – he won 10 – my first year with Coach Ruff, we won 10. And the next year, uh, was I think it was five, and they let Coach Ruff go, which I thought was a – they should have blew this place up for letting him go. But, you know, and then they hired Montgomery, who had never been a head football coach. And, again, Montgomery's a good person, good 
the assistant coach. He just wasn't ready to be a head coach. And you go through three losing seasons. I mean, it was it was dismal those three years. So you 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 lost. You, you win ten. Then you have a losing season. You fire Coach McNeil. Then you have three losing seasons where you win three games, and then they hire uh, Coach Houston. And, you know, I thought the kids made an improvement last year. But, again, I've said it a million times. Winning is a habit. Unfortunately, losing is also a habit. And so you go through five years of losing. And I, these kids, you know, they get in the game even when they're up in the back of their mind, what's going to happen? You know, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? Uh, I know they're practicing hard. I think we've done a nice job. Uh, this staff has done a great job recruiting. Uh, we are extremely young. You look at who we played, you know, 19 juniors and seniors on two lanes starting 22. And I don't know. We don't have any seniors on offense, do we? Maybe one. Deontay so, Smith and Penix, and they're not in the lineup right you now. Know, so yeah, it's just. It's just going to take time. Uh, and, Coach, I can speak on this from experience. It's a lot easier to put on weight than it is to lose weight. It's a lot. It seems like it takes a lot longer to try to build it back up than, than to blow it up, right? Yeah. It blew up quick to uh, to Brendan's point, and it's just taken a while to, to build it back up. Yeah, you know, and I've always felt like the hardest two positions to recruit, and, again, I coached for 48 years, the, the hardest people to find – are linemen, especially offensive linemen. You know, there are a lot of, well, there ain't a lot of them, but, you know, it's hard to find a, a six foot four or taller young man, you know, that's that can move his feet, you know, the basketball type player. And when you find him, everybody else has found him. Uh, what we did when Skip Hulse was here and with Coach McNeil, we went out and find those six foot four guys that were 220. You know, I hope one day we could get them up to, you know, to, you know, 270, 280. And then you, maybe the second or third year you start recruiting, you're looking for those kids that, that weigh, you know, 240 pounds that you think one day will play at 290 or 300. Uh, and there's just there's just not very many linemen out there. And that's where we're lacking. And, and that's, that's what's hurting us right now. Yeah. And when you get those linemen and, and you're playing with freshman linemen, Again, the offensive line is the toughest position to coach. Uh, you, you don't like to start. I don't. I never liked it when you had a bunch of sophomores. You know, you need those offensive linemen because it's the toughest position to learn. Their techniques are tough, and you know, hopefully, your offensive line is is all juniors and seniors and maybe a three-year sophomore. To your point, coach, you don't see a lot of good O lines with freshmen. Well, no. Yeah. No. Well, uh, thank you, Brendan, for the call in Daytona Beach. 317-1250. Bill is up in Greenville. Hey, Bill. Hey, Bill. Um, I want to say something about the running back situation today. I noticed in the second half, Rajah Harris ran the ball one time for about five or six yards. When he came out, when he came out of the game, his left shoulder was drooping pretty bad, and I didn't know if he had a separated shoulder at that point or not. But they kind of worked on him on the sidelines, and he didn't come back until late in the ball game. And when he did come back, he never carried the ball. It looked like he was a decoy in there, and they threw the ball every time when he was in there, but he never carried after that. Of course, Mitchell came in after he was hurt and carried the ball, you know, basically the rest of the game. And then... I was wondering, well, where is Darius Penix? And I looked up and down the sidelines, and I never even saw – I didn't see where he was dressed today. Yeah, I was uh, I was told – Penix would have been the guy to put in, you know, for blocking and taking it down the middle, I was thought. But I didn't see him dressed. And I wasn't there, uh, but I was told by somebody that was there that they didn't see Penix either on the sideline. So, Bill, uh, and I, I don't have a, a reason or an answer why he wasn't right now. But to your point, yeah, when Harris went out, we saw Mitchell, and that was about it because Chase Hayden is not here anymore. Uh, Demetrius Mooney's been dealing with, with health issues, uh, from what I understand, and and I don't know where Penix was. So all of a sudden, uh, a really stocked running back room 
was uh, looking depleted there in the second half. Yeah. Yeah, I was sort of surprised. And it, it, it's interesting that they did finally put Harris in. But all he seemed to be in there for was to block a little bit. Yeah. Because he never did carry the ball. Yeah, it was good to see him get back on the field, but you're right. And uh, we're going to need him uh, next Friday, that's for sure. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Bill. Thanks for tuning in, man, and giving us a call. 317-1250. Uh, Jenny is up in Greenville. Hey, Jenny. Don't sound so excited, Cliff. I um, wanted to help you guys end the show on a great note. I wanted to thank you, Coach Smith, Shirley Chandler, for holding down the Pirate Radio for it. My voice is a little hoarse because I felt like I was the only one cheering on the Pirates, although Pirate Nation did show up better tonight than they did for Navy. The energy was better. It was great to see the band. It, I got excited when I saw Petey. Um, and that's kind of the 2020 um, era we're living in. To follow up on what Bill was just talking about, I did see Penix on the sideline in his track suit, slightly limping, definitely not dressed out, but he was on the sideline trying to cheer on the team. And um, I think there are a few other things going on that we might not have realized um, that correlated with little glitches for our Pirates. But um, still believe the guys did great. And um, I didn't see him give up tonight. And... Um, that was a good sign. So we will, we got to leave on a good note. Hurts to lose, but um, thank you guys for holding down the fort. You guys rock. And um, we'll see what happens on Friday the 13th. All right. Thank you, Jenny. Jenny in Greenville calling in. Appreciate the kind words. Uh, guys, that'll about do it for today's edition of the U.S. Sailor Fifth Quarter Call-In Show. Final thoughts, Coach. Uh, what kind of practices uh, are going to be had this week? Going to be some tough ones for the guys, you think? You know, I would I would think so. Uh, I can, you know, I, I'm a storyteller, I guess people are going to think. But, you know, when when Skip came here, that first year, you know, we, we didn't win a lot of games, but the kids fall hard. I can remember going into staff meeting with four weeks left in the season, and Skip said, guys, the next month will be spring practice. <laughs> so we tried to get them ready for the games, but I'm telling you what, it was bloody. <laughs> uh, you know, we just, the last four weeks of the season on uh, Mondays and Tuesdays, it was like spring practice. And then we pulled off of them, you know, the next two days. But uh, And that made us a lot better. We, had, we weren't going to a bowl. We didn't have enough wins. So Skip said, we're going to get better. I remember the last game of the season, it was at UAB. And their quarterback was Hackney, and he guaranteed a win over ECU, and they were go- and y'all beat him at home, and that kind of spearheaded a really good 2006, uh, where you did go to a bowl game, yeah. kind of finishing off the year strong, and you just hope that like Tulane, you kept mentioning they they're playing for a bowl. Yeah, what are we playing for right now? I don't know to get better every week, right? Yeah, to just trying to get better, get some W's, you know, and get some W's, and, yeah. and uh, build for next year and. You know, like I said though, they got they, they had nineteen juniors and seniors on that field today in the starting twenty two. Clip, uh, you took the words out of my mouth when you were talking to Brian Bailey, but uh, Bill earlier in the show, he called in and asked the question several times. Well, what happened tonight? Where did this come from? Don't be surprised if he calls in on Friday night and says to, or asks the same thing when the Pirates go toe to toe against Cincinnati. But I'm not saying the Pirates are going to go there and, and win, or hopefully they do, but. I mean, don't be surprised to see a team that was competitive like they were in the Tulsa game. So, it's just it's week in and week out. It just you, you never know. But uh, you know, today was disappointing. But maybe the Pirates can uh, get back into being a competitive football team uh, coming up on Friday. Well, maybe our kids will wake up and play better than they are in Cincinnati. If be thinking, hey, we're playing East Carolina and they're not very good. So. Maybe they'll go into their game not ready to play, and we'll go into the game and play better than we are, and who knows? That's why they keep score. You never know what's going to happen. And as a lifelong coach, you, those things happen, yeah, in, they happen in football, right? They happen. Yeah. Coach, thanks for hanging out, man. Love Enjoyed it. it. And uh, we'll talk to you Thursday, 5 o'clock, on Pirate Radio Live and after the game on Friday, on yes. the fifth quarter. All right, Shirley, Chan, crew, great job today. Thank you. Enjoyed it. And uh, we will be back with you next Friday. 
3.30 on the Bud Light pregame tailgate, getting you ready for ECU and Cincinnati. Thanks to Parker's Barbecue for the awesome meal today. Uh, You folks should check that out this weekend. Go to parkersbbq.com. Ask about their delivery options. They deliver now. All right, for the crew here at Pirate Radio, I am Cliff Brock. We will see you next Friday on the Bud Light pregame tailgate and the U.S. Cellular fifth quarter call-in show. Yeah. Have been listening to the U.S. Cellular fifth quarter postgame call-in show. Join us next time for complete postgame coverage of East Carolina football exclusively on Pirate Radio.